Connor Listoka for another episode of 372 Pages. We'll never get back. Hello, Connor. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm good. What do you have to say about this book? <laughs> what is your mood? How well, are you feeling? I know you're not cozy anymore. We've We've eased out of coziness. I'm far from cozy. I'm in a I'm in an office where the uh, the insulation in the ceiling does not exist. We've discovered since it started to be 90 degrees in Virginia. So I have I have removed my shirt uh, to record this episode. Turned off my fan. Um, if someone comes and finds me, like if I succumb to the to the heat. Uh, 90 minutes in, they'll, they'll, they'll wonder why I'm, it's one of those like puzzles, you know, like a man is lying on the ground. Uh, there's a puddle next to him. There is no murder weapon type of thing. They'll say he is, he is, he was shirtless. He had earphones in, uh, he was wearing Crocs. And then there was a copy of model land on the ground next to him. How did this, how did this man wind up in this situation? What drove him to be here? Right. And the only ones who can answer, you know, it'll be one of those office team building things. And only our uh, listeners will know the real yes. answer to it. True, yeah. <laughs> and they will move up in their positions at work, and uh, they'll take over the company. So, exactly. That's what any, yeah. any good 372 listener would, would, would have achieved. But I had a, I had a sobering moment uh, right before we logged into here. Like, I'm sure you've heard, you probably have a higher brow example, but there's uh, you know, a period from, I think, 1965 through 1966 where Bob Dylan, in the course of 14 or 15 months, released bringing it all back home, Highway 61 and Blonde on Blonde. Mm-hmm. And it's just this you know, epic period of creativity and, and uh, prolificness. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we went to record today, uh, I closed down the window, the VLC window, with the video of the movie Baby Ghost sure. to, to hop on here and talk to you about Model Land for two hours. So I think that me and Bobby D are pretty much on that same wavelength of you know, just tapping into a, you know, a consciousness, um, a higher self, I guess. Yeah, Sh- I think Shakespeare I, had the same thing probably going on at some point in time. Yeah, I think it's like um, uh, it was said of Churchill, you know, he would sit in he would sit in his bed and compose. Uh, and so he'd be writing a let's say he'd be writing a biography of Cicero or something with one mm-hmm. hand. And then he'd be reciting to his secretary with the other, yes. with you know, out loud. And then he'd be drinking a vodka, with, you know. With... <laughs> right. So, yes, it's that level because I just completed um, I was in the studio with Kevin and Bill of Rift Tracks. And we did Universal Soldier 2 Brothers in Arms, yes. with, which I consider a Burt Reynolds movie. I don't know if anyone knows that. Um, and, and Gary Busey's a, in it. Burt Reynolds, Gary, Gary Busey buddy comedy, really. Yes. And so, yeah, that to the Joe Estevez baby ghost and then this. So pretty much the same wavelength. Yeah. <laughs> Church, uh. Churchillian. <laughs> But it's a delight. Uh, it's been a little bit of a break. We had some 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 vacations and some time off, so we we had uh, Lauren and Bridget sort of take up the mantle over on our Patreon. But we're we're, we're ready to talk more Model Land, and that's a good thing because, as I was saying to you off air when when we just got started, this is a, a book where a lot of things happen, and a lot of things happen in these last. I think we read six chapters this time. Yeah, uh, things happen, but. They are things that are hard to picture. I, part of it seems like, I don't know if you ever got through it. Did, did you see the Beatles' Yellow Submarine? Yeah, I, there was a time in, in, in high school where I convinced myself that that was a cool thing to watch. Yeah, I, I could never do it. I went through my Beatles phase and annoyed my parents, um, you know, listening to every era. Like, have, did you realize how much the Beatles changed? Yes, <laughs> yeah, we lived through it. My you know? God, son. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but uh, but the uh, that was the one that I could never quite. It's like, ah, oh, man, I want to like this. But things just happening, but they're, they're not things that, what? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a lot of what Model Land is. It reminds me of a very extra long yellow submarine. Sure, no, no. It, well, it reminds you of someone, you know, a, a guy who comes downstairs at the party who has just, you know, taken a six foot bong hit, watched Yellow Submarine, and comes down and wants to explain it to you. Yes, you know, at or least the cartoon you can see. <laughs> right, right. Or someone just says, uh, plows through your objections. I, I think it's been brought up before. Like I had the weirdest dream. Yes. And you're like, yep, we all have them. Now, can we all... Uh, and here's what happened. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. That's what this book is, only extra long. Yeah, we get a, a lot of things. So they, they, they introduce the authors, the, Tyra Banks and her uh, theoretical 
uh, Ghost Rider, the the odd 50-year-old man, uh, do introduce a lot of plot points, don't do a very good job of conveying them to you. Um, and I, I think there's no other, other way to, to do it than to just get started with uh, Chapter 15, <laughs> the, la- the I noted that the so the last section ended on a big cliffhanger. There was the phrase where where Tookie was going into her, her her enormous clown shoes tripped her up, and she went into a textbook Tookie de la Creme fall. Yes, and then this Much chapter like Bella, I guess. Yeah, right. She's very Be- Bella esque, clumsy to the point of of self immolation at times. Yes. However, this uh, one she she manages to write herself. Yeah, she, she doesn't she doesn't fall. It's. It's just good drama. <laughs> I, I, I took I took the liberty of rewriting one classic book, if this was the style uh, that the author used. Sure. When Gregor Samsa woke up one morning from an unsettling dream, he found himself changed in his bed into a monstrous vermin. But then he turned back to a normal guy and went on with his day. So, <laughs> not a big deal. You can just forget about that little uh, that little red herring. Crisis averted. <laughs> uh, Macbeth saw the three weird sisters. Waved them and kept going. Yeah, said to Lady Macbeth, what was up with them? <laughs> well, that just happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the plot so far, I don't. we don't need to get into it much. She's been ab- absorbed into a Willy Wonka world of modeling. Yes. Uh, mistakenly, her sister was supposed to be, her sister was the heir apparent to this. She uh, She took it instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now she's in uh, she's in Willy Wonka world. Whatever. whatever. I thought she's you were going to say absorbed into a, a goo filled sack. Yeah, well, I forgot about the sack. <laughs> <laughs> the changeable sack that you could fall down and create big thuds with. Sure. Um, but also had goo in it. The goo that hardened into candles. Uh, yeah, that's why going into the plot doesn't do anyone much good. Exactly. Yeah, but so they are here, and this is where the strange things are about to happen. They have a tour guide, but she's uh, she's instructing them to sort of like that they need to be um, at the opening ceremony, essentially, uh, even though things are not what they seem, and they are not sure if they actually belong there because they've essentially had like card read errors every time they've tried to access things. But CL is behind the... Uh, behind the scenes, pulling some strings, this this disgraced diva has is sort of got their back. Yeah, and the they is a, a loose group that I'm not sure they're going to coalesce yet. We don't know who's who exactly. Sure, there's a bunch of characters, and I'm unclear about who's going to be her ally and who's her foe. It's it's a little bit up in the air. Yes, but they do have they in order to. Tyra Banks does not do a good job of describing what happens, but this, at least, she man- she sort of manages to uh, make you understand these characters based on the old handy technique of uh, stereotyping. She she gets yes. her she gets that pen out and then has the sassy sassy big bone girl, and she has the uh, the brainy uh, bookish uh, albino girl, and she has the uh, tiny uh, but feisty. Um, what is her deal? The ti- I guess just the tiny girl. <laughs> the tiny girl. And then she has, I mean, Zhen Zhen. Sure. I, I, I'm not going to speculate. <laughs> yeah. There's, a, there's an Indian girl who always has her headphones in. There's um, a, a sort of dour girl. There's a, at some point in time, there's an Icelandic girl who sort of speaks like the Swedish chef. Uh, so everyone has that one trait. And so she can always come back to it in order to um, ground you and sort of remind you who everyone is. Because otherwise it would just be names thrown and you know there's nothing um, distinguishing Zarpressa or her toady chaste you know what i mean N- neither of them have been identified as anything other than you know the bitches so you know we don't know whether Zarpressa is or Zarpessa is is tall uh, thin large we don't know anything about chaste whether she's blonde redheaded um but we just know that they're evil so th- that that's right. sort of what we what, what we would be getting if we didn't have these stereotypes to fall back on Yes, and the Icelandic girl, the reason you know she's Icelandic, she's always coming in and eating urine-scented fermented <laughs> shark. So it's like, oh, that's right. She's from Iceland with quotes around it. Sure. Uh, I thought uh, I thought we had an email about that, but no, Carl did not come up. Maybe, maybe okay. it just, I just didn't paste it into the thing. Uh, uh, the make, official... make it clear there, Hakarl, right? That's how it's pronounced. Yes. The fermented shark. Official okay. fermented shark of 372 pages. Yes. Yeah. You've had it. I have not. Well. 
Uh, but yeah, so she is going to the opening ceremonies. You get there by jumping into Model Land's network of zipper walls, which are also hidden behind thorn bushes. So you, in order to get to them, you have to run towards a thorn bush, hope that it opens up, and then jump into the into the zipper where you then go down a slide. And that made for a, a very Kleinian moment where uh, our hero, Tookie, is going down uh, the slide. It says, immediately she got the sense that she was sliding down, down, down. Screams echoed in her ears. After a moment, she realized they were hers. <laughs> so we, we get a, a character doing something without uh, acknowledging that it's himself and then only only later realizing it, which was just a, a chef's kiss Klein trait. That's 100% Klein, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she, yeah, she runs into... It's, she spied a wall of prickly metallic brush. So I'm picturing, you know, something like razor wire, right? Yes, which she hurled herself into, <laughs> just as Zhen Zhen had done minutes before. Ouch! Wrong plant. So right now, she's in serious need of medical attention. Yeah. I mean, she is cut up. She, you know, some of them probably deeper than others, of course. Sure, rusty but, ones. Yeah. She's but not very, up on her shots, I'm sure. Very dangerous. And uh, there's, uh, she's running at full force, and it says, uh, Modern symphony music grew louder in her ears, the only indication she was making any headway. Huh. So I, uh, I was able to find out what that music was, because, you know, I'm into symphony music. Modern, not so much as, as uh, you know, classical. But uh, I was able to find the piece that was playing. So I'm Modern just symphony r- music, sure. Modern symphony. I'm just going to run that really quick. Huh? God, no. Spurring you on? No, that is... I think I'd rather take the razor wire. Connor, jump into a zipper wall. Come on. And peop- And that is uh, technically, you know, impossible to do, right? Like, if I picked up a violin and, and, and played that, it would sound identical to me, but you would say, oh, no, you weren't hitting the notes correctly. Oh, of, of course, yeah. yeah. No, there's a bunch of technique that goes into that. <laughs> <sighs> well, uh, so... But- all right, so she slides down the thing, but before that, uh, what is going on here? The the woman, uh, another Seal? one. Uh, hang on. Uh, oh wait, the wall. Okay, there were hundreds of them. Zippers of all sizes, some as tall as Tookie, perfectly polished. One broken, one zippers placed vertically. It was obviously a dead end. So why is the wall of thorny vines an opening, but zippers are a dead end? Like why is what is the logic there? Right, that's like walking into a room filled with doors and thinking, ah, great, another dead end. Yeah, like, I don't Those understand. open, that's their sole purpose. <laughs> they lead <Yes>. to something. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, it, it's meant to be that platform in Harry Potter where they, you know, to get to the train station, they just have to, like, run at that brick wall. Mm, mm-hmm. So, like, that's, you know, that's, that's again, what we're supposed to take away from this. And once you have a, once you, once you find it, you know, once you find that uh, thing that it's ripping off, you can sort of understand these things a lot better. Yeah, I guess it's like we know by now when we're seeing a bad movie, like, oh, they were trying to do this. Yeah. You know, were... Even though it's baffling without that context, if you suddenly realize, ah, this is what they were trying to do. Yes, this is meant to be a, a dating montage or something. This is meant to be the, the scene where he gets his team together. Yeah, we, we've seen yeah. it in a better movie. Yeah. Uh, we, get, we get this once she does arrive at the assembly hall, which I think might be the O, maybe? The O, yes, that is correct. But we get this uh, this just lovely immediate negation of something that the author themselves has already said. Uh, Tookie's eyes strayed to the left to an assembly of about 300 other girls. Some were not girls at all, but older women. <laughs> well done, then. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what is it? That's like uh, DJ humor in the middle of the book. Like, <laughs> hey, this is uh, Bob calling from the tire store. Your car is done. Oh, well, thank you, Bob. I did bring my... Ha ha, it's not. It's Rick from WKRP. <laughs> right, yes, exactly. Oh, great. That's very funny. A five-year-old joke, yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, those, a lot of those are mannequins, which uh, are totally nude, and their flesh seemed to be made of hard plastic with creases at every joint, the shoulders, elbows, and wrists, the neck, hips, knees, and ankles, which made them look like living, breathing mannequins. So they have no, you know, they say they're totally nude, but they have no description of, you know, what else is going on uh, to those body parts I didn't mention there. And I uh, urge you now to click over to your picture of Michael Salort. 
the, uh, the <laughs> yes, writer. Right, yeah. Just grinning it up. Yep, he's got crowds of naked mannequins. Now, I was unclear. The people that she knew, are they turned into mannequins? Or these are just separate creatures? Now, who do you mean the people she knew? The people that, that, that uh, are well, Tookie knew? Well, let's... Yeah, Dylan, Shiraz, Piper. No, um, so these are essentially. Uh, I sort of, my my uh, understanding was that these are like uh, nuns almost. They they wanted to be Bellas, they failed, and so now it's sort of like a those who can't do teach sort of thing. So they've renounced the rest of their life in order to um, stay at Model Land and serve. Essentially, I don't know when they then get turned into uh, hard plastic with creases at every joint type of thing. But this, okay. is, this is the only way they could stay there. And they, they, they love Model Land so much that this is what they, the compromise they made. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that was unclear to me. Sure, sure. It was, this, it was during my note taking when I was like, I guess that's what they're going for here. Uh, and that is then the group of young men march in. Yes. Doing a highly powerful staccato dance. <laughs> highly powerful. <laughs> now, if this were video, I would, of course, be asking you to do. <laughs> right. A highly powerful staccato dance. Could you describe it, though, to our listeners? What is a highly powerful staccato dance? I, I mean, I think we're just meant to to think that it's thunder from down under. You know, a Chippendales type of thing. Staccato? What's the staccato part? Uh, I'm just imagining a big, like, march. Um, either that or there's a video of the uh, Windows 95 release party when Steve Ballmer and Bill Gates and a bunch of Microsoft execs are on stage dancing to start me up by the Rolling Stones. It's a very it's a it's a very good moment. It's a very good twenty five seconds of video. Balmer is drenched a, with sweat. Um, is, is it a highly powerful? It's high. Oh, it's, it's it's highly powerful. I don't know about staccato, but it's highly powerful. Staccato. I don't know. I, I highlighted the exact same sentence because I don't know how staccato fits into it. Unless you're what, what does staccato mean in the? Uh... Well, quick stop. Like stop and start quickly. Okay. So I I was picturing um, what's the one with the uh, that. Joel Schumacher, or no, the uh, the movie about strippers with the one from Saved by the Bell. Oh, yeah. I can never remember the name. Showgirls. Showgirls, she does a lot of staccato dances, which oh. is kind of like, it's very like... Thrashing? Thrust. She's just thrashing at <laughs> yes. you. It's like the least erotic thing you've yeah. ever seen. <laughs> so I picture something like that, just kind of like stop and start, you know, fly girls type stuff where it's just like a lot of movement. Mm-hmm. But, or the uh, uh, the the thriller dance is sort of staccato with the with the werewolf thrusts like to the left and right. Oh sure, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but what are, the other takeaway is that the sentence continues, saying that each was more handsome than the next. Yeah. Which is the second comparison of that we've had so far, and also must be pretty damn annoying for the bestosterone guy who led them in when he uh, he turns around. Wait a second, you organized this? Wow. I, I thought I was I thought I was leading our highly powerful staccato dance. I thought that was an honor, and yet I turned around to see that all the handsome guys are in ascending order, starting with me. I'm going to go weep. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, maybe what makes them handsome is the fact that they were wearing black billowing trousers stuffed into calf high boots, <laughs> leather suspenders crisscrossing their bare chests. Okay. Again, click over to the picture of Michael Salort. <laughs> so that's essentially MC Hammer or his uh, CB4 yes. counterpart, Wacky D. Yeah. Cleft chin, strong brows, flexing muscles, eyes that look not at you, but through you. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so then they start horning on, on these these guys. Yeah. Uh, like, I'll take that one. You know, it's... <laughs> yeah. Chase says, I'm claiming him first. Which one, Zarpessa asked? All of them. Dylan snorted. She looks like the type of girl who'd do them all, doesn't she? And they are, like, 14? Correct? 13 or 14. Okay, just checking. They have not uh, gone through puberty yet. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> As uh, we will find out. Mr. Uh, Salort. All right, here's a baffling thing. I'll just read it, and you have to deal with it. I don't know what to say about it. Tookie read a message scrolling across his forehead. Long, long ago, the battle raged between the Muses and the Nar, but before the message could end, the board member frantically wiped his forehead and changed what was being spelled out. The scroll started over. Long, long ago, the battle raged between the Muses and the nail polish remover. End quote. <laughs> what in the name of holy hell is going on? Uh, is Nar G-N-A-R? It is not. Okay. N-A-R. 
Okay. Uh, I, I mean, what we're meant to assume is that CL is sort of undermining some sort of thing, but having no idea what the board, B-O-R-E-D, spelled like uh, Norm MacDonald referring to Carrot Top's movie, um, <laughs> she, we don't know what the NAR is or what they're doing, so we're not, we're, we have no frame of reference for what message she was trying to get across to the kids. Sure. Well, that was a board member with lizard skin and yellow eyes and a forked tongue, so... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, that described thusly that w- one board member had lizard skin, yellow eyes, a forked tongue that sprang out of its mouth. That thing makes me feel normal, Toki thought, as she watched the lizard's head turned white. So it is a lizard then. Don't don't lead with it had a lizard skin, yellow eyes, and a forked tongue. Just, just say it's a lizard if it's a lizard. Right. Well, she says that she has to make that clear because it's... And it morphed into an alabaster alligator with pink eyes. The reaction to that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Screaming nonstop. Hoping you wake up from whatever drug-induced nightmare you're living through. Piper smiled. (laughs) I just know I'm going to be his teacher's pet. This is the kind of prose we have to deal with here. I don't know what's happening literally from one phrase to the other, let alone one sentence to the next. Yeah, the board member is leaping up to catch a chicken carcass on a string, and Piper is, you know, sort of smiling and thinking about how she's going to bring him an apple on the first day of class. Uh, Yes, but the very next sentence, we talked about this off air. Do you have it there? I'll I'll read it if not. Yeah, they're introducing another guru. And I just want to to point out that it does describe, this is on the, the, the page after the boys' staccato dance. It says, there were six members of the board, one stranger than the next. So on back-to-back pages, <laughs> things have been described thusly. Pick a new way to to describe things. It's very, very rare that things are going to be organized in this precise order. Yes. But yeah, yeah, so this next guru slash board member is a stunning figure that looked like it was three-quarters man, one-quarter woman, pranced in next, generating a half-hearted smattering of applause. So what are they... You know what are they trying to convey there with a, the the three quarter man one quarter woman? I mean, it doesn't matter. Obviously, it's not going to affect anything. But just for the purposes of writing <laughs> and conveying to a reader, what are you imagining here? Well, let me see. Does this clear it up or obfuscate it more? This guru wore what looked like <laughs> the mating result of a black leather jumpsuit and a bustier. He or she was muscular, yet thin, with blonde hair slicked back into a tight ballerina bun. Coming into focus now, is it? Sure, yeah, that's <laughs> that's relatable. But like, you know, even if you said if you said half man, half woman, I guess you could even imagine it was like down the, you know, down the center or something like that, but yeah, I yeah. don't know what it means to <laughs> you know, it, without any specifics there, it's a very, you know, it, it's it's very specific in terms of percentages without being specific at all about what you're supposed to be thinking. Very, very tough going. But at some point, I, you know, uh, Zarpessa or Chase goes like, that's a man? So it obviously looks more like a woman, even though it's one quarter woman. I'm uh, shocked that you didn't uh, bring out your, uh, that's a man, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, man. It's got to be the 25th anniversary of that coming. We, we'd be, we got to bring it back. Now's the time. Known Austin Vermonter, Power Mike references. Myers. Yes. He would, he would, people would be like, I made his pizza or uh, I, I was in the, uh, in the local food co-op and he was behind me and he would always sort of just do the, you know, people would double take and he would just like sort of politely like acknowledge that like, yes, I was in, you know, every single wow. movie of your childhood. However, yeah. please <laughs> do not bother me. This is why I'm in Vermont. Well, they're, so they're showing... So this madness is parading in front of them. It's very, very difficult for your mind's eye to grab onto it at all. Mm -hmm. Like where the space that they're in, what it's supposed to be. There are no touchstones. So you're, you know, again, yellow submarine, uh, you know, flower is growing out of a trumpet, whatever. It's just, it's just a nightmare. But their reaction to it, these people who presumably come from lands where this does not happen, (laughs) is uh, Shiraz, Shiraz. Grabbed Dylan's hands. Come on, it's fun. Dylan gave in and swung her long ponytails around. Piper did a unique robot-like bop. Every movement precise. Even Piper did a unique robot-like Even bop. Even Piper, yes. So everyone, the reaction to it is like, this is the, the greatest fun we've ever seen. The three-quarters man, one-quarter woman, or whatever, you know. 
uh, the guy who turned into an albino alligator with pink <laughs> eyes. This is the reaction is to uh, is to jump around and say is fun. Yeah, it's like when uh, when your your aunt hears the Black Eyed Peas playing at a wedding or something. It's it's that sort of like leap out of your seat and rush to the dance floor. Took you still dabbing antiseptic on her razor wounds from that razor sharp bush she jumped into. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I've I've never had I I have not done uh, I I'm pretty much restricted myself to uh, to alcohol and and you know tobacco pretty much, mm-hmm. but uh, I've never had a a, a trip. But th- this, I mean, this is a bad trip, right? This is the thing you go. Please make it stop. Like this is. Uh, you know, this th- is peyote. This is what, I, yeah. I think it's happening? precisely when uh, in the film version of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, maybe the book too, when he takes too much of whatever he takes, that's when he starts seeing like the lizard people around his hotel, and that's uh, you know, that's what they lead with at Model Land. <laughs> it's only going to build from there. I mean, yeah, this is ayahuasca. You're throwing up and having diarrhea at the same time. <laughs> like, make it stop. Even Piper <laughs> <laughs> doing little dances that are nicely uh, timed and everything. So. Well, the dancing is a a is is as joyful as it gets because we quickly, oh man, get we get the Belladonna statue that comes in. So the yes. be, this is the Belladonna is, I mean, at some point in time, it it presents itself as a statue almost entirely. There's various statues throughout the school, and uh, Tookie at some point wonders like, are we ever going to get to see the real thing? And it's like the Belladonna is clearly doing a a great and powerful Oz type of thing by only communicating through these things that are either like the um, statue uh, that was the Nickelodeon uh, TV show. Um, I, I posted a picture of it, but there was one where a, a statue would talk to you as you were, as you were competing. There was a, a, a DuckTales and Nintendo game where an Incan statue, like an Easter Island statue sort of started uh, was a final boss. So that's what I'm picturing the Belladonna as every time I, I hear about the statue talking. Yeah. I, I didn't, uh, I mean, I guess I assumed that, we're going to find out that the the Belladonna is, you know, a, an old woman who, you know, was subsumed into Model Land years before or something. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. She's going to give uh, Model Land to Tookie at some point. Of course. My dear, I'm sorry you had to go through all of this, 590 pages of this garbage, but <laughs> Model Land is now yours. That's my guess anyway. Yeah. That, all but these right now she's- nude women who are not girls who have jointed things at their... Statue are yours to control, and believe me when I say yours to control, I mean yours to control. They will do absolutely... Ma'am, I'm 14! Please, 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 please. Mr. Salort, remove this dialogue. I stopped your menses for this, I'll assure you of that. <laughs> Mr. Salort, this is wildly unethical. I'm sorry I made you jump into that razor wire. Did that sever your carotid artery or your <laughs> thoracic? It, I never, it never healed. Ah, why is this guy talking to me? How did he? Why did he go metafiction and make himself a character in his own ghost-written book? We're not even supposed to know who he is. Ah, nude mannequins. Nude <laughs> mannequins. Salort, uh, you monster. Yes. Well, then, so yeah, the Benelladon starts talking, and that's when we get into the model land anthem Mm -hmm. which i mean we've talked about there was there were sort of some rhymes and songs a surprising amount of them so far in this book actually all terrible all devoid of uh comprehensible meter or uh how they would actually work as music and this one though is like longer than american pie it's longer than um than, than bob dylan's recent song about the jfk assassination uh, it's longer than Weird Al's Albuquerque, all combined, I think. It it just goes on and on. And it's something that the girls are like meant to to understand and, and join in on like, the endless choruses of. Yeah, well, you might be surprised to to learn that I, I actually, I have a recording of, of this. Really? Yeah, I found it. From is it the, modern classical music? Well, it's, it, yeah, I mean, it's what you'd expect from this is the anthem of, of Model Land. <laughs> and so it is anthemic. Okay. And uh yeah, so they recorded it for the audiobook, which I was surprised. I thought the person who read it would just read it, but no, the they done it in character. Have you been listening to the audiobook then? I, I well, I pulled this out. Okay. I I haven't been listening to the whole thing. Okay. Um uh bits bits and bobs here and there from uh from the dark web. Got it. But uh but let's listen to uh let's listen to a little bit of the uh, the Model Land uh, anthem. Okay. Here we go. My dear model land is a heavenly queendom Its walls rich with memories of yesterday 
sister year are lost and equated, but must be respected, or I'll discard you like moth eaten cashmere. Listen to me now, my spanking new no season. Okay, yeah, I get the idea. That's the model land anthem. Yeah. No, I mean that. Obviously, that's just a part of the model land anthem. Let, well, I don't wanna, I'll, no. I'll, I'll, I'll cue up the I'll cue up the uh, second part of the model land anthem. Let's hear the uh, second part. You wear waistcoats, wedding dresses, wetsuits, and lingerie, leotards, and yellow boots, deodorant every day. Yeah, pretty similar to the first. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Not a dynamic. Anthem yeah. really, it doesn't have. A oh, but it's not over yet. Uh, let me uh, let me just play the third part of the model, and this is the third of twelve. So, oh, uh, God, every, no. everyone, hang on. Here we go. Perform in petticoat, theme, much attended, fashion elite expo safari. And we get the oh, idea. All right. Okay, yes. Sorry. Thank you. God. <laughs> <laughs> what a so, voice yeah, the, on that on that audio book reenactor. That's like that was very good. Yes, I got I'm him surprised. for pole That's I'm surprised that like Dylan and Shiraz and you didn't join in and sing along. What, what are you doing? Uh, or yeah. do those little recall and response things? Even Piper was not refusing to join in. It was, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it says that like they 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 gradually picked up on the on the chorus, and I had to flip back and be like, which one was the chorus? Like, <laughs> I didn't know that the, it was just endless verses that that are you know run into each other. Nothing indicated that it was the. Uh, the part that uh, the upper class Bellas knew and were joining into. They sit through it every year. This is, uh, I, I'm looking at a different format than you because I don't have the book. This is the the ebook. Three pages. <laughs> I mean, there's little interruptions. It's like Tookie, you know, clapped her hand over her mouth and that kind of little reactions. But uh, but mainly it's just, you know, it's, again, a Tolkien song just coming up in the middle of. Yeah. You know, we're about to meet the deadly spider. There's going to be this 10th scene. But how about a 13th stanza song before we get to that? <laughs> wow. That, I mean, it could be the inspiration. You never know. It's a little dash yeah. of Harry Potter and Tolkien. But Tolkien comes just in the form of the unneeded songs. Yes. Well, which, uh, which, which, uh, which popular uh, intellectual property is this crib from? The Belladonna's irrational hatred of actresses. I was puzzling over that it must be i mean obviously she's pouring all of her gripes about the industry which i find you know i find a little distasteful like you know nobody asked you to be a world famous model <laughs> yes exactly. i'm sure there are things that irritate you but she seems to be pouring a lot of bitterness into this thing mm -hmm. and and more as we go on um but this one i couldn't figure out maybe it's just like when she was at her hottest she took a bunch of hollywood meetings and they were all like well, you're clearly not an actress. Sure. So this is her reaction to that. Like, actresses suck. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. She was in Coyote Ugly, I think, maybe. Yes. Um, yeah. Sure yeah but it, yeah, it says the Bella Donna can't stand actresses. She says they're pitiful model and rejects who just want any kind of spotlight. I once heard her say actresses are a step below mannequins. So, yeah, just a very interesting grudge. Tyra yeah. Banks just sees... Meryl Streep coming down the street and just spits on the ground and walks in the other direction. <laughs> it's not, they're not all, I mean, yeah, we had a, we did a movie Max Havoc where the, the lead actress was, you know, obviously a, a Maxim cover model who they just, you know, w wanted to, you know, put in a bikini, but, <laughs> but most actresses are, are quite talented and aren't just there to have people leer at them. Um, the Max Havoc style. Uh, conversely, and I don't mean this to be a, a slam against her, I, I, but uh, Lauren Hutton was an actress who became, or was a model who became an actress. Mm -hmm. And I think we had her in a movie or someone from from Riff Tracks. I was like, oh, that's Lauren Hutton. Like, she used to be a model. And I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> she seems more like an actress. But yes, no, she right. was, you know, she's got a, a, a characteristic uh, gap in her teeth and everything. Mm -hmm. That was that was her deal. <laughs> The other note is that if you leave model land, you age 50 years. So they've got that going for them. And they're essentially going to be weeding people out here. This is sort of the, unbeknownst to the girls, they're entering into the hazing territory. Um, <laughs> but uh, as at the time the song ends, it says the newly recruited Bellas all cheered wildly, presumably because the song had ended after three pages. 
And then it says, the agile ones did high kicks, backflips, and splits in the air. Shiraz did a cartwheel. I, I do not know why why she did that. I don't I don't know why Shiraz was singled out there, but that's sort of a tick that the authors have here is that they they say everybody did this and then one of the four girls you know also did something. Yes, and then the statue begins singing again, this time without music. Wow. I don't have that, but I think I can approximate it. Okay. Your premature merriment has come much too fast. Disparity between good and bad will be very vast. THBC separates the punks from the class. For some, no seas discovery day will be your last. <laughs> it's, there were there was an ellipsis in there. It sounds like when the when the voice of uh, you know a popular Muppet uh, passes away and they have to get a guy to replace it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I guess I could get a second job. Then, huh? <laughs> the, new, the new Elmo, if anything ever happens to the second Elmo. <laughs> uh, that's the end of chapter 15. Yeah, boy. Well, it moves very quickly on to chapter 16, the THBC Tamasha. And yeah, one, one knock about this book, you, it, does, it does sort of move along, like all these scenes sort of run right into each other. So we haven't covered a lot of time you know it's probably been all of 24 hours since the book started that all this happened but uh we, we it, that's been a lot packed into these 230 pages we've read so far I, I i admit to being a little bit uh piqued by the titles at the beginning of every one because though they are explained at some point it becomes very tiresome mm -hmm. to have this jumble of letters at the beginning of every chapter <laughs> a lot of acronyms a lot of alliteration Yes, you're not James Joyce here. This is nothing I'm going to look up. Just tell me what this is. Uh, but uh, we're we're left hanging. What is Tamisha? What is THBC? Oh, we'll find out. But yeah. it's I, just irritating. I still don't know what Tamisha is. It looks like it's some sort of movie from 2015 is the main thing that turns up. Oh, I guess I maybe I don't know. Hopefully I have a note somewhere, but I don't know. Right the, now, uh, I don't know. the big reveal at the start of this one said, The new Bella's cont contagious jubilance at the start of the opera had abruptly turned to an awkward mix of hope and dread. It was an opera? Uh, it was quite a reveal. I, I, I guess. <laughs> I, maybe the person who sang the, uh, the, uh, the book on tape did not realize it was an opera. Apparently. Well, yeah. Maybe if they were just reading it in, uh, in, in real time, they'd, you probably wouldn't want to go back and redo it. said a orchestral that bold. Yeah. yeah, it said orchestral music. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We get to meet uh, four great characters named She Likey, Her Likey, I Likey, and Me Likey, which is interesting. They're from Mini Paul, and they're sort of a combined four four girls, all with different hair colors, who are of the same person, kind of. And, you know, looking for analogs in other bits of literature, the only thing I could come up with was uh, Popeye's Four Nephews, <laughs> Pip-Eye, Peep-Eye, Poop-Eye, <laughs> and Pep-Eye, maybe? But it, I know there is a poop eye. Okay, because perfect. As a kid, we deeply enjoyed that, of course. But. Well, yeah, that's like an absolute goldmine. I'm surprised the they didn't do the, uh, the the Pac-Man ghost, where it was Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Sue. Yeah, no, they that was, it seems like a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Pep, what are the Pep Boys? Mm. They have a Manny, Mo, and I Jack. Think. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I guess that's not the same, but well, yeah. If it was Manny, Mo, Jack, and then like, you know, Hakeem or something. Yes. But uh, the uh, the nephews, Pip-Eye, pip -Eye, poop -Eye, and pop pep -Eye, whatever, <laughs> they are supposed to be like, I don't know, five or six, uh -huh. but they look exactly like Popeyes. <laughs> right. And they just have like higher voices. Very disturbing, uh, not at all appealing characters. And the trope of the nephew, you know, it's just, you know, Mickey had them. Donald Duck had them. Kermit the Frog has a nephew named Robin. Like, whoa, whoa, why is this always this? These people don't want the 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 trials and and responsibilities of of fatherhood, or they just don't want to imply that that Donald Duck canonically banged, or what's the deal? <laughs> I I think it's just to avoid complications. Yeah, you don't want to have to write out a because uh, Popeye, a, a that's wife, you know, or... that's uh, that's something that very few of us want to picture. I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, there is a uh, an actual historical character. I mean, you were here. Have you, did you ever have pig's eye beer? Uh, no. Where in Minnesota? Yeah, it's no. a Minnesota character. He lived. He apparently like lived in like 
a cave or something over in St. Paul and would people would stop by and give him uh, give him things. He was just like some hermit who lived there, and his name was Pig's Eye. I deeply regret that there are no photos of Pig's Eye, a man who lived in a cave on the Mississippi River. In Minnesota, yeah. In Minnesota, and who became a beloved character. Yeah, you're not getting the name Pig's Eye if you know if you're the uh, if you're the the second to last um, bestosterone who enters. You know, each one more handsome than the last. You're, you're not. It's not going to be like here's Jake, here's Logan, here's Pig's Eye. <laughs> Pig's yes. Eye was leading the pack, I believe. Uh, it's it's like uh, we, Bridget and I can never figure out that uh, why John Wilkes Booth. Of whom we all have a you know a good picture of what he looks like. I thought you said we're going to also have have a deep fondness for uh, <laughs> uh, an underrated person. He's gotten a raw deal by history. <laughs> no, no, he he. Uh, if you read about him in history, when he walked you know into the Ford Theater or whatever, women were just like, "Oh, well, there he is." <laughs> There's the very obviously very handsome John Wilkes Booth with his pigeon chest and his tiny little legs wow mm, 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 mm. it's just things have changed i guess and now he's approaching that ogre who's our president (laughs) all right so yes so we have these this foursome that i can't figure out what they're supposed to be yeah and who knows whether they're gonna show up again they do sort of get name dropped once or twice more they evidently share a bed but um the the main conflict that's setting itself up is is that tookie and zarpesa are you know hate each other obviously and Tookie tries to make amends and says tells our president that she won't tell anyone else about her catching her dumpster diving which leads to this uh, great villainous exchange uh no you heard me right Zarpessa simpered her eyes still on Tookie are you ready then she grabbed the zipper teeth on either side of the opening and used them as handles with a dramatic hair sweep she gracefully launched herself into the zip zap and disappeared but Tookie could still hear her voice from inside of the zipper for a lesson in how to shut the hell up, <laughs> which is about as if you're if you're going for villainous quips, this is about as lame as they come. Even Chase probably was not impressed with that one. Uh yeah, that's that's not a one you want to. Uh, that's not the wit of the staircase, as they say. That's not a <laughs> that's not a barb you throw over your shoulder and go, "Well done." Now I feel good about leaving. Like my dad, one time I came back in, in high school when I had just got in the car and came back after curfew, and when I sort of slunk upstairs, uh, he was sitting there and and had the had the light on, and I was sort of preemptive of being like, "I know I'm late. Uh, I just want to say I'm sorry," and he just turned off the light and goes, you will be. <laughs> oh, wow. And there was never a follow-up. It was never acknowledged again. I think he, he he had the light and then probably just sat there in bed being like, what have I done? Why? How did it come to this? Like, <laughs> What movie was he watching right yeah, exactly. before you came in? <laughs> uh, but I'm going to uh, challenge uh, Michael Salort here uh, with a couple of, we're going to go back in time and see what was said earlier. Uh, Zarpessa's face drained of color. She brought her nose close to Tookie's. You're not going to tell about, about, you know, I saw you at the dumpster eating all that rotting food. So now let's go back, shall we? Okay. Oh, sure. To, you're, to the dumpster. You're flipping. The in. woman in the tribal mask pushed in front of the rest and grabbed handfuls of untouched fish fillets, half drained, half drained bottles of wine and loaves of day old très joli bread. <laughs> Czar, baby, I'm so sorry. You don't deserve this. Take the sea bass. It's still warm. This is not rotting food. Yeah, it's a Michelin-starred restaurant, it sounds like. It sounds very good. (laughs) It's just, I mean, I don't like the location. Sure. But untouched fish fillets. This is not eating out of a bus tub. This is like, uh, you know, finding a bunch of those uh, styrofoam to-go containers with the... delicious freshly prepared meals in them yeah he made it sound like it was a trough you know uh, of slop yeah day old bread yeah oh, that you still I, buy I that in day the old bread all yeah. the time <laughs> uh yeah so anyway that just struck me as nice like, good catch you can't go back and say that come on <laughs> yeah right if turkey's making those claims then uh then our press is right to deliver these quips to her mm-hmm and uh so now we learn Again, my annoyance at the THBC. They are at Thigh High Boot Camp. Mm -hmm. And it's led by our uh, three-quarter man, one-quarter woman, Guru Ganero Nars. (laughs) 
which I, you know, if that's meant to, the other, like the, the, the enormous sentient hand, I feel like that had a, uh, a, a, a pun, didn't it? I don't remember. Oh, it did. Yeah. But, I so did. I don't know if, if Gunnar Nars is going for something, it ends up just sounding uh, very, uh, Lucasian, George Lucasian. Is that how that's pronounced? Uh, it is now. Luke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll let it stand. All right. Uh, but yeah, this is, and this is where Chase, uh, Chase Snickers, that's a man. And it's like, well, I would assume that it does look like a man as a three quarter man, right? Uh, yes. A, a ballerina bun. I don't know. That's a man bun if it's three quarters man. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> speculate on that. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, so maybe art, art challenge. People can, uh, what is the, what is the, uh, what does the guru look like? Yeah. Yeah. They're they're very hard to you know I, I my mind's eye I said does not grasp these things I don't know sure um, this either one of them either Salort or do we have a name for them yet have we done a mashup oh man I don't think so you mean you mean a Shatlart type of thing a Shatlart you know, a Brangelina Banklort I don't know yeah uh, very strange sense of humor emanating from those pair. Uh, false eyelashes made from deceased daddy long legs. Mm-hmm. Took he spotted an area of the cart that held multiple hair removers, removal systems, tweezers, razors, and black wax that slowly dripped to the floor. The label on the wax jar said LP wax recycled from vinyl albums of yesteryear. Now, I know those those are probably two jokes in there. <laughs> I don't get them. and I, I, It's just a bizarre sense of humor. What is that supposed to mean? If it is some sort of modeling in joke, again, this book is written for for nine to fifteen year olds, so you're 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 not really deep in the industry at that point in time. Yeah, and that vinyl I, is expensive. There's like a, you know a brand new record costs like twenty two bucks. So uh, melt that down and refashion it into into more records, not just this uh, this nonsense. But but the joke, I mean, does the joke work because the wax isn't the the wax isn't the vinyl. Mm-hmm. The wax is what they press the vinyl from, right? <laughs> That's why they call <laughs> it wax, on. though. Sure, yeah, yeah. So it's not, you can't melt an album. And and is it like lip wax? That's that's the joke there? Like LP? Oh, you wax your no. upper lip? Oh, that could, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Well, so yeah, if, if, if it were, if to, to get your joke, if it requires two guys to, you know, take extensive notes and then discuss it for hours, that's that's sort of when you tell it's working. Right. I like that uh, uh, they said, um, I mean, so the whole premise of this is that they're going to have to do a fashion show and learn how to rock the runway. This is where they're doing this. And these are the lessons mm-hmm. they learned. And so in order to do that, they to get fitted for their costumes, they needed the mannequins to take their measurements. So it says mannequins pour it in through a dozen hidden entrances, pushing carts full of various apparatuses, rulers, T-squares, compasses, miniature scales, gauges and meters. They marched to the girls and instantly got to work. And then a few second sentences later, phase one complete, Ganero roared. The measuring mannequins vanished just as quickly as they'd arrived. And I just, I pictured the mannequins in the, in the room they had, they had left to being just like, hey, why did we carry in all those T-squares? We, <laughs> right. we were measuring uh, humans like wastes. Uh, we weren't uh, trying to, to level off a doorway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, this is obviously supposed to be, again, if we're trying to find the analogs here. This is, uh, you know, uh, the Wizard of Oz. A rub, rub here. <laughs> from, from sip, sip, yeah. yeah, I guess is that what's going on? Uh, They're all shuffling around, and there's a lot of business happening as they attach dead daddy long legs to them and drip hot vinyl on them. Yeah, they're buffing the Tin Man's ass. <laughs> That's that's not your takeaway from that scene. <laughs> uh, I guess it is now that you mention it. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. It is sort of a, a welcoming montage type of thing, but it, it takes a turn very quickly for the negative. Uh, and Tuki makes this uh, 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 prognosis: the closest anyone had ever come to examining her face was when Creamy took her to the doctor last year for tests to figure out why her forehead seemed to be growing faster than the rest of her face. <laughs> I mean, I assume the official prognosis was punch bowl head, but uh, <laughs> right. that's a that that is a very odd thing for a, a parent to bring. 
<laughs> right. Now, even to, even to call attention to, like, you know, you're like, well, we'll have to assume that this all evens out instead of being just like, my God, daughter, this is terrible. We've got to get you in here. This thing that you're no doubt already self-conscious about, we need to call more attention to by having a medical guy probe and prob you. Right. <laughs> So when my uh, my son was little, he uh, he got in like a little. He got hit his head at the playground, and we went. We took him, and he seemed fine. There was nothing wrong with him. And we went to a movie. And when we got out of the movie, he came out of it, and he had gotten like a bit of a hematoma, and so water collected in his face. Uh-huh. And so when he walked into the light, both Bridget and I went, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and he, <laughs> We did not have the reaction we should have, which is like, hey, we're going to drive straight to the emergency room. You're fine. You're yeah. fine. But he looked at us. He's like, what? What? <laughs> You're just going. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, when we got there, they're like, nope, this is, it's fine. It just, walk, you know, they dismissed right. us right away. Reassuring, but calming. The fact that we both didn't, one of us wasn't like, now, honey, he looks great. We were both like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Well, the other, uh, the other, I guess you could call it attempt at humor is a little bit more overt here than LP wax, but it's also, uh, I just uh, something I felt like I needed to just issue a firm settle down to. Tookie was loving thigh high boot camp. She thought the name was especially fitting because she felt like she was flying on a natural thigh high. It's uh, another mm. another trademark of these two is the uh, the the the. Uh, Making a terrible joke that we all sort of look at and, and think, ha ha, and then making the joke about your own joke. Um, it's they're they're stacking up at this point in time. Yeah, that is. There's a couple coming up as well. But great. Oof, yeah. <laughs> uh, so they put the makeup on, correct? Uh huh. They the and the guy the Gennaro, what's Gennaro his first? Nars, <laughs> Gennaro Nars, who speaks in. Uh, like it's sort of a pigeon English because he grabs words from many different languages, Mm -hmm. German, uh, Italian, French, and uh, all of these like makeup stations come down and they get made up. And then we get, uh, they look in the mirror and Tookie looks great for the first time. She looks around, everyone looks great. And then she took, he turned to see what Shiraz was pointing to an older, unrecognizable person and, and just picture this, reading this to your, like, nine-year-old right, niece yeah. or whatever. This is like, they begged for one more chapter before bedtime, and you're saying, yeah. this is what you're going to end with. Oh, you sigh and go, okay, <laughs> but, you know, to not, tomorrow night, right to bed. An older, unrecognizable person was staring at Tookie. It had a boil growing on its nose, <laughs> letting out a smoke that smelled of rotten eggs and animal droppings. <laughs> Much of its hair had fallen out in clumps, and many of the hanging strands had fused together into what looked like chunks of petrified wood. Its eyes were bruised, swollen, nearly shut, its ears swollen into what looked like bulbs of cauliflower. (laughs) Oh my god, Tookie and the creature whispered. That was when she realized the gruesome creature was her. Good night, my sweetest love. Yes, tuck you in. Have sweet dreams. Do not smell that rotten egg and animal dropping smell. Yeah. It can't hurt you anymore. No boil will ever grow on your nose that smokes smelling of, of, of utter filth. <laughs> hey, we not 20 minutes ago, we were demanding more in-depth descriptions of these people that we couldn't picture. And uh, <laughs> now they've delivered, even though they uh, fell back on what looked like this sort of uh, climbing in touch twice in one sentence. No, t- twice yes, in back-to-back indeed. sentences. Twice in a description. Yes. Insane. Um, Hair that looks like petrified wood? <laughs> Tough to picture. Sure, yeah. Petrified wood is sort of usually like glossy and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice thing. She gave it a shot. Tough to picture. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. That, and so this, uh, this, this chapter, just like the last one, goes right into chapter 17, Home Sour Home. And it brings us into uh, everybody else uh, who has uh, put on this, this poison makeup. Piper's skin was so raw it was transparent. Transparent, her blood was visible, pumping wildly through her face. She resembled a skeleton with muscles and veins, with a thin layer of clear plastic keeping it all together. So this Shades is Isabella again. Exactly. Edward's Edward's yeah. groin is tightening. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But it's like uh, so that's that's also revolting. And this all ends up I don't did you have any more of the descriptions of the other I'm sure he described the other two girls. 
Uh, I just have the uh, the head injury person, the gaping <laughs> hole four inches wide exposing your brains. God. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, exposed it's just a, vocal cords. It's a nightmare. Yeah. You've got the uh, mm-hmm. the um, adagio, adagio playing in the background. I do that every time uh, mm-hmm. as they're, the girls are wailing. They're gnashing their teeth. It's Hieronymus Bosch. And this is all, though, something that Gunnarunars has done to teach them a valuable lesson. The first rule of Model Land, don't share makeup. That's their, that's, that's what this whole ruse was about. It was, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, everyone was morphed into a revolting hag in order to say, don't, um, don't borrow someone else's eyeliner. Had that been clearly happening, that's... <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. They gave them the makeup and sort of made them do it. Uh, yeah, so I didn't... Uh, but So this is one of those, again, this is... Um, what's his name falling into the stream at, uh, you know... Uh, who's the kid who gets sucked into the blueberry pipes? Augustus know, Gloop. Whatever. Augustus Gloop. Yeah. I, I, it's that kind of crap where it's like, no, no, that's not real. Don't do that. And so... These hideous monsters are actually not hideous monsters, of course. Yeah. It's a trick. But it also caused a decent part of the 100 member of the class to, to run for the door, and um, they're, they're never allowed back in. So they're, they're, this is how they're weeding out the, the true believers. Correct. And in the middle of all this horror, uh, how about a little tribute to uh, one of our old authors, Pappy? Oh, Shared utensils give you creepy conjunctivitis, gory gangrene, bubonic boils, atrocious abscesses, styes, and staphylococcus. Ugh. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a. Uh, it sounds like a. You know, if you buy the the pack of Starbursts that have the gross flavors, those are what they. Those are what the flavors would be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I guess that's a thing that if you're if you're a, a model, or, I mean, I don't know, I don't put, I don't put on makeup, but you, you you just don't don't share it with the other people in your dorm. I guess that's it. Doesn't seem like it's worthy of a whole chapter devoted to it. But there we go. Also, doesn't seem like lesson number one. But <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> they'll meet it out the way they see fit. So there it is. Right. The, what is the, what is the first commandment? Thou shalt not kill. Seems like a little yeah. little little you know little better to lead with in, in that in terms of importance if each commandment is going to be you know more important than the next of course um that's, maybe, that's maybe you do start with the uh, the lower ones like don't share makeup that's not the first commandment just so you don't get roasted on that oh it's but, not no no okay. but we'll we'll, we'll oh, look let's well, move on whatever <laughs> <laughs> i uh <laughs> you know whatever i was i was reading uh bazooka joe comics during sunday school uh all right so uh, yeah. We? Well, then, so then everyone's had this horrible ex- ex- uh, um, experience, and then they uh, inter- interrupt it by just uh, wheeling out a bunch of designer handbags, <laughs> which everyone is delighted by. Not uh, there's no no thought that any more treachery might be underfoot immediately after he tricked them and, and turned them all into witches. But any little dances to do or any like, this is fun, this fun, I guess. Sorry, I shouldn't have included an article there. I mean, they, they, they have uh, chased, trilled, I got a heli holding up a monogram tote. I got a Zizo, Zarpressa car- cried happily, holding up a hobo bag that bore a logo of interlocking X's. And then, uh, any more? Uh, no, but yeah. I mean, how long would it be before you could react you know, with these kinds of reactions, after you had seen your face turn into a cauliflower head with rotted smoking boob oils, you know, <laughs> oozing pus, yeah, and you were convinced that it was real, you didn't, you did not know it was a trick, right? Um, it's kind of like, have you ever been in a near miss car accident exactly. where you literally like, I I came seconds from death or a quarter of a second from being obliterated off the face of the earth right you'd cancel your plans for that evening to sort of just sit and and uh you know get your heart beating back to normal yeah you would not immediately uh you know receive the sandwich say hey you want half of my egg salad yeah please thank you yes. you're like give me a second man <laughs> <laughs> it happened to me once in my uh my legs buckled i was it was about a half an hour later and i was in a store and i like fell to my knees you know involuntarily obviously mm-hmm. it was just like oh oh god you hadn't just discovered no, a really good are... deal on uh on frosted flakes or something <laughs> yes <laughs> two for one <laughs> buy one get one uh no this causes uh they're just fine like yeah that was a trick well 
You're going to get that. Oh, now I'm going to hand you something else. Great. Yeah, exactly. I'd still be recovered from the goo-filled pouch, I mean, honestly. I, <laughs> yes. you know, but these these girls have been ripped from their homes, uh, put through this thing, cut themselves on zipper walls and stuff. But nope, they're they're excited to to receive these uh, Heli and Zizo hobo bags. Uh, we forgot to mention, by the way, in the middle of this horror, like this before this horror, that woman who slides down the... Well, she's a girl. What am I saying? She slides down the thing and she takes off her scalp. Yeah, that was the Icelandic girl. Yeah, and then she's the one who has the gaping hole in her head where you can see her brain and everything. <laughs> they, uh, they, 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 when they got to the bottom of it, they, 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 all the girls believe that she is dead. She's she lying in on a the pool ground of blood. in a pool of blood. <laughs> <laughs> they all thought she's dead, and then, uh, then she just gets back up. I, oh yeah, I, I just wrote that that happened. I just said they briefly think she's dead for a few sentences, but then she's not. I mean, is that a thing that is specific to her? She was at a modeling, she was at a show or something and a, a woman walked into a door and like split her skull open and everyone just went, you know, she's dead and oh, leave her there. We've got to show the new line or <laughs> something. Is that what she's referencing? It was I don't so know. bizarre. On the first day of college, one of, a uh, buddy of mine, um, you know, had woke up in in the hospital after drinking. You know, his, his parents were told, your son is in the hospital. Um, you know, come get him. Uh, they drove down. You know, that was all people talked about for two weeks. Is that someone passed out in the right. gutter and had to go to the hospital. Like, if this happened on the, the hour one of school. <laughs> they never say how they repaired her scalp or anything. Yeah, I guess she I, just I think they said there's around. dried blood later. I, she's not long for the thing. She flees, I think, at this, at this next moment. But... Okay. But anyway, so the, the mannequins deliver these bags and then uh, quickly scuttle out of the room as fast as they had come in. Almost instantly, the jewelry and bags began to revolt. <laughs> Chase's tote handles bound her wrist and squeezed. Dylan's earrings turned into two-pound weights, dragging down her earlobes. She screamed in pain. The necklace <laughs> Tookie was wearing started to get warm, then scalding hot. Then it wrapped several times around her neck and squeezed and squeezed. Tookie clutched at her neck, barely able to breathe. <laughs> so, I mean, at least the wow. other one, you probably weren't in any physical pain, even though you were, uh, you know, snot was dripping out of your nose and your ear hair was like, you know, gl growing into your eyebrows type of thing. But you weren't like in agony. Well, it gets better. The ceiling opened, revealing a gigantic, loud mechanical contraption. Tookie realized it was a giant sewing machine with an enormous needle that was as long as her dining room table in Peppertown. <laughs> Slowly, the machine descended upon the girls, its needles slamming up and down. <laughs> and uh, that is the prelude to, that's not just to scare them, the needle goes into their skulls. Yeah. It, that's, that's, I think that's the how they are transitioned to the next like challenge or something like that. Yes. But, and, the, and so the lesson here, the lesson here, this is all sort of, um, I had to look up his name, but the Arrested Development character, J. Walter Weatherman. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that shows up and he's like, and that's why you never stick your hand out the car window. Yes. The lesson here, don't buy counterfeit luxury goods. Uh, it's a, it, the, Finally, we have a book and an author bold enough to take this stance. The, uh, the Gunurunar says, that's how my cronies feel whenever you purchase or accept a gift of a counterfeit courtery. Corderiere creation. You may think you are sporting the latest fashions and fooling your pitifully clueless circle of friends, but you are merely concocting a deceitful world of pseudo luxury and corrupt make believe, while the hardworking artisans who dedicate their lives to producing authentic wares are robbed blindly. And who produces these fake wares? Poor, starving children who roam homeless in public squalor and live poverty stricken in rodent infested shanties. So he, so there's, he's sticking up for the hardworking artisans and then like, well, should we go rescue the poor starving children? No, no, just, just buy the, buy the bags from the people who make them. You know, we, they, we don't want them getting a raw deal. And again, it's, it's, it's a very confusing way. Like we all understand the rhythms of, um, you know, let's say you, you're the first time in Gordon Ramsay's kitchen or something like, you're going to cook me an egg that's rubbery. You know, like, oh, God, you need to learn how to cook an egg. Uh -huh. Or, you know, you go to boot camp and you go like, my gun is, that is not a gun soldier. You know, these are the things. But like giving them fake bags that they take <laughs> and they don't recognize that they're 
they're fake bags and that's lesson number two right the first is don't you know share anybody's makeup the second is this i I just it just seems odd we're off the rails here this seems like lesson z right or like it could be i mean frankly if 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 i gave someone a uh fake jizo hobo bag and they hugged it to themselves and said, oh, my God, and they squealed. I'd be like, sweet, they can't tell the difference. That was, you know, I saved $500 by not buying that real thing. There's the lesson for you. I I just, the, the lessons are meted out strangely. Yeah. Um, but now we have a, a firm settle down, Michael Solo, Solort. Okay. I, yeah, I think I know. Her body tilted upside down and she felt her skirt, her shirt, sorry, cargo pants, and underwear slip off. More fingers gently pulled at her limbs and clothed her body. The space she was in was incredibly dark, and Tookie rubbed her hands over the mystery fabrics that now touched her skin. They had dips and folds and tucks, and felt extremely luxe. (laughs) I'll let you offer the uh, settle down. Settle down, 50-year-old ghostwriter. Thank you. you got to settle down here. (laughs) This is uh, this is entering into Don DeLillo territory. Don DeLillo, is that his name, or is that the author of Underworld? That is, that is the author of Underworld. Don, DeMe- uh, Don yeah. DeMello. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Don DeMello. Yeah, I, I've, I've read some stuff about him. He's uh, <laughs> When he was writing Underworld, he was always like, all right, now they find uh, Bobby Thompson's home run ball, and then he, then he brings yeah. out the girls on page oh, 878. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the one about the Kennedy assassination here. <laughs> But yeah, it's 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 venturing into that uh, the the amount of uh, clothing and unclothing and and uh, things around necks and and all that stuff. And not to mention, did we know that she did we know that our hero had been wearing cargo pants the whole time? Like a, like a that. like a Comic Con attendee, a, a a guy wearing his cargo shorts to to Comic Con with an enormous graphic tee, where like you know Bowser is. Um, uh, geez, I don't know, on the cover of Pulp Fiction or something, like something like that. Yeah, and what and what is, uh, just for old time's sake, because I haven't been to Comic-Con in a while, what do you think the top speed at Comic-Con of a person wearing cargo shorts is? <laughs> one, one, one hundredth of a mile an hour. Yes. I've, I've been behind crowds of people trying, <laughs> trying to get to an actual location. That is the most infuriating thing. Well, you never know. How can you? Yeah, you might be turning uh, t- turning your head because you, you never know when you might pass like the guy who vo- voices Waluigi or something, and you might need to hit him up for an autograph. I hit a huge roadblock once, and it was it took me a long time to make my way around it. You know, I was walking by booths that no one was attending because the crowd was around someone. And it was, of course, a slave Leia. <laughs> With the circle right around her was the most depressing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Just drooling guys with eyes like pie plates. <laughs> this woman in the middle of it, it was awful. Yeah, I mean, I, I went to to Mardi Gras the uh, um, like during you know freshman year of, of college or something, and and you, people would the same sort of thing would happen where it was like, gentlemen, you you do understand that there are if this is what you desire so much that you are crowding around this poor person <laughs> with a yes. this disposable camera you 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 must know there are easier ways to to get exactly this in a much more comfortable scenario. Yes. <laughs> uh yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. We we maybe we ought to go back to you'll never go back to Comic-Con again, will you? That'll be your that'll be the I mean, one thing that in in in, in 30 years they're like Comic-Con, you're like, "Nah, you know, COVID changed a lot of things for me. <laughs> never going to Comic-Con." Anything else? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> just that. Well, I mean, I I I hope so. I don't know. There was good stuff there. We met a lot of good people. It's just like it's it's a very uh, very crowded atmosphere. Yes. Uh, I don't have anything else for chapter seventeen. Uh, yeah, no. She just. Uh, I, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'll just ask you if this was your takeaways for all these characters because this is how it ends. She's getting slammed into this pouch. She's naked and clothed again in lux fabrics. She closed her eyes and tried to hold on to all the good things that had happened to her on her journey here. She recalled Dylan's sassy laugh. Shiraz's spunky broken English, Piper's intelligence and dry wit, and Zen Zen's contagious giggle and nurturing kindness. Is that your takeaway from all these characters? <laughs> Piper's Piper's dry wit? <laughs> I did. All of them seem to be created out of whole cloth right now. I do not recall any of these things. <laughs> Good. All right. And the, the only other takeaway was that uh, 
Ganero. Ganero has has repeatedly just been scowling, like verbally lashing out at our four four heroes, I guess, for reasons that were un, unspecified. But he, uh, Shiraz, acknowledged that buying the fake goods is no good. And Ganero looks pleased and said, "At least one of you is listening, even if it is a knee high Lilliputian." So. Jonathan Swift and Gulliver's Travels do exist in this world. That is our our takeaway here. So good. So so, so probably does. Uh, so does Don DeLillo. So so if well, then is it a hybrid of Earth? What when did he write? He was in the seventeen hundreds, right? Sure. Jonathan Swift. I don't know. So I mean, a long time ago. Right. So yeah. I, I, I'm just trying to figure out the timeline. What year are we at in the hybrid model and Earth? Yeah, I mean, uh, at least 2,500, I would say. Okay, if man is still alive. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, Zager and Evans also exist in the Model Land universe. How about that for a quick pull? <laughs> that is a very good pull. Who are the I, Pac-Man I... Fever guys? Brewer and Shipley? Oh, I... No, that's one toke over the line. Oh, uh, uh, Brewer and Shipley. Buckner and Garcia. That's Pac-Man Buckner Fever. Buckner and Garcia. Okay. <laughs> Ah, well, uh, before we get to any more notable duos of novelty songs, why don't we do some real or fanfic? And now I bet they bitching because my flow switch and trying to tell me what to write about some fanfiction. Can't they just be happy? So, yeah, this is going to be real or fanfic. The segment where Mike tries to guess uh, which of these five passages I'm about to read him are real excerpts from later in Model Land or fanfic written by our listeners and Patreon supporters. Uh, Patreon, as we mentioned at the beginning of the episode, had some crazy stuff going on recently. Uh, Lauren did real or fanfic. She tried to see if she could best you. And uh, Bridget came on and uh, responded to some choice excerpts of Model Land. Bridget uh, had a much more favorable opinion of it. I, wow. Uh, of Model Land than, uh, than we have. <laughs> so it just shows you there's a range of opinions about this. We're, we're not the only ones. Sure. But yeah, if you want to check that out, go to patreon.com slash 372 pages. You get every episode early. We do fun things like meet the authors. We've done one of those with uh, Cole Stratton and Sean Thomason recently. We're going to do one with Janet Varney coming up. So it's a lot of fun. Go check it out. Um, are you ready to do this? I am, though. I feel like now that we have uh, open smoking wounds on people's faces, <laughs> needles plunging deep through people's bodies because they're the size of sofas, um, and we have people transforming into albino alligators with pink eyes, like, how can I possibly win this? That's true. I don't know. It is The odds are stacked hugely against me, but uh, I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. Here is number one. The leg leech burped out a pile of Harriet's hair and threw the two women's <laughs> legs onto its body. They instantly attached, still kicking wildly. Then the creature balanced itself on a group of ten legs. It began to waltz to a place in front of the surviving pilgrims. I know how to save us, Creamy, Miracle yelled. Dancing! Creamy looked at her, relieved. Do your thing, Miracle baby. Dance in your spirit and in your body. Miracle gazed up at her mother, touched it for the first time. Creamy supported her dancing. She proudly ran in front of the leg leech and began a rousing back-and-forth dance routine with Bellissima in her arms. Slowly and joyfully, the leg leech retreated, backing away like a thousand ballerinas in unison. Wow. Well, you know, as soon as I say it, there is all that stuff. Leg <laughs> leeches. You said began a rousing dance and, uh, you know... I, my, I was tuned to Salord at this point. I'm like, oh no, Miracle's doing an arousing dance. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, began arousing. arousing. Yeah, back and forth. Yes. Dance. Yikes. Uh, boy, I, I don't know. I mean, coin toss. I'll, I'll say it's real just to... Okay. Number two. When the flurry of rainbow bubbles subsided, Tookie gasped and realized she could breathe underwater. Before them floated a half-female hacked octopus whose sea-green hair swirled about her shimmery figure like a slow-mo slow -mo tornado of kelp. The octomaid, as Tookie guessed, brushed her hair aside, revealing tantalizing electric blue eyes set off by a flawless ivory complexion. "'Welcome to LOL, Library of the Lagoon,' said the ethereal woman, gesturing one of her iridescent tentacle legs to the carved coral bookshelves extending into the murky depths of the lagoon. On the nearest shelf, Tookie could just make out the titles. "'Scandal Eyes, a memoir,' Super Smize Me, Underwater Proofing Your Face, and The Cosmetology of Cosmetics. So the final L stands for library, Tookie thought. I am the resident Librapus, the Octolady continued, here to assist you in the formation of your beautiful brains. 
Ugh, we have to read, Zarpessa whined. Of course not. Who has time to read, the Libropus reported. Aside from myself, that is, she added, adjusting one of the straps on her barnacle-encrusted clamshell bra. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say it's fanfic. The only reason being, though there are there's the, the dumb pun thing, the dumb joke was a nice pickup, but there might have been one too many. Okay. <laughs> but again, I'm happy to be proven wrong. All right. Number three. Tookie's ostrich legs crumpled beneath her. The books clattered to the ground. Somewhere, a buzzer echoed and rattled the walls, and the fashion tomes dissolved like acid into the floor. She'd have to start over. I'm sorry! She looked behind her and gasped. Resting on the ground was a dismembered nose, apparently also following the intoxicating smell. The sentient organ flopped on the ground like a fish. Sorry, she cried again. Tookie didn't know that noses could get mad, but she could tell by the way its nostrils flared that it was furious. They reminded her of Mr. Mrs. De La Creme after Tookie spilled coffee on her purse. The nose flared its nostrils again, and with one big exhale, rocketed itself back into the air, keeping aloft with occasional puffs of air. It was about to leave in a huff, but stopped. Tookie held her breath as the nose came closer and closer, wedged itself into her armpit, and inhaled. <laughs> oh, I'll say real, just because the armpit sniffing is a weird, <laughs> weird enough to be actually from her. Ah, uh, number four. Shut up already, Creamy yelled. I've told you a thousand times. Larsenina won't be at Intoxabella any longer once everybody finds out she's mating with a civilian. I know, Lynn answered. And when I make it to Model Land to become an Intoxabella, he won't be able to resist me and he'll leave her. Creamy chuckled. Hate to break it to you, wrinkle face. They won't pick you with that finger missing. Lynn's mouth fell open. Who are you calling wrinkle face? Meanwhile, the twisted, rabid, hunchbacked figure the pilgrims had named Hunchy expertly speared a tumble terror and hurled it to the ground. <laughs> then he took off his boot, revealing razor-sharp claws, lifted his foot, and sliced the creature's human torso. It yelled in a deep, human-sounding voice. <laughs> oh, my God. People picked up on the nightmare aspects of this. Uh, I'll say that that's fanfic. Okay. Uh, number five, final one. Valente started cackling. That was when Tookie noticed that the iron wasn't letting go. Soon, she could smell something burning. Her hair. Around her, the same thing was happening to everyone else, and their screams crescendoed in unison. What do we do? Shiraz shrieked. Beyond, beyond her, Suppressa was crying. No, please stop, she sobbed. Tookie's iron let go and grabbed another clump, then another and another, holding on until smoke began to rise. The stench of singed strands filled her nostrils. It seemed like it was never going to end. This was torture. At long last, just when Tookie thought she must look like a child's abused doll, Valente shouted, Enough! Tookie then felt herself freed as all the irons vanished into puffs of smoke. She reached up shakily and touched her burned hair. Tears began to fall. A lot of nostrils in this thing. <laughs> uh... I don't know. I'll say real. I have zero confidence. All righty. So there are five. Let's go back and review how you did. The first one was uh, Creamy, uh, Miracle doing an, not an arousing dance, a rousing back and forth dance. Uh, the leg leech. You said real. That is real. Wow. Submitted by Laurel. <laughs> <laughs> we got leg leeches to look forward to. Uh, eating hair. Oh, um, God. We got uh, number two. This was the uh, the mermaid, the octopus, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, you said fanfic. That was fanfic written by okay. written by Laurel. That's um, good. So that's your two for two. Wow. Uh, number three. That was um, uh, the nose. Uh, the nose sniffing your armpit. Um, I cut that off before it got a little ridiculous. But you said real. That was nah. fanfic written by Amanda. Okay. It said it, the last two sentences were those those freckles look familiar. She thought, Lizzie, is that you? But where's the rest of you? We got we got a couple involving uh, Lizzie sightings that I thought were a little okay. over the top. Um, so anyway, so that's uh, two for three. Uh, it was Amanda. I think I said uh, number yes. four. Uh, that was uh, the <laughs> twisted rabid hunchback figure named Hunchy spearing a tumble terror as creamy calls someone else wrinkle face. Uh, you said fan folk. That was real. 
paper. Oh, come on. From later in the book, submitted by Hayden. So you, her, her parents do make another appearance. We've got that to look forward to. And then number five, this was the hair burning, clumps of burning hair, singeing. You said real. That was fanfic by LaTanya. Ah, so two terrible. for five beyond Ouch. coin flip turf. That just proves how difficult this is, especially when uh, literally anything can happen in this book and you would believe it. We've got hunchbacks spearing things. Look, taking off uh, toenail razors and slicing bodies in half. Yeah. Well, Ugh. all right. The challenge is on. Uh, chapter right. chapter 18. Yeah. La Lumiere. I guess. It's not going to cheer my spirits after that, but let's do it. <laughs> well, it begins with a Hall of Fame, I think, 372 dumb sentence that I, I'm just going to burn it here because it's too good not to talk about. She took his regaining consciousness uh, by smelling blood oranges, and then we get this uh, jarring transition as her sort of eyes blink open. Admiring the D, are you? A voice asked. <laughs> 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 and uh, and this, of course, is I think maybe it's Zen Zen, and the D stands for the dorms, where they're all going to live, of course, and that is drilled home by this uh, very subtle uh, acknowledgement of that. I get it, Tookie announced. The D stands for dorms. Exactly, Zhen Zhen said. That's where I wrote, uh, D and the dorms take the exact same amount of time to say. Why are we doing this? <laughs> the O, the D. Yeah. Uh, this this is all terrible. She needs to drop this. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if yeah, if, if O stood for like operatic house or something, then sure. Slice off some of those syllables, but you're right. <laughs> it's not an abbreviation. Uh, before that, we get this, and uh, let me get your reaction to it. You made it, girl, Dylan cried, running toward Tookie. Shiraz and Piper barreled toward her, too, and the girls crashed together in a sloppy, love-filled reunion hug. Was this earned? Is uh, this a thing we... <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, they barely know each other, do they? Yeah, I mean, they shared the pouch, but I think that, you know, when the nail pushed them through here, the sewing machine needle... That's when you could have fled and, and ran for the exit. So maybe they are, maybe they thought she, she would have fled, but I don't know. Nothing seems she, earned. She did, though. She did. They went, right? She went home in that, in that oh, one where right. she got stabbed yeah, by yeah. the needle. In the other... So that was the fake Willy Wonka thing where they, they actually do cheat, but they it doesn't matter. Right. Kind of a thing. Yeah, he takes so, yeah. the thing from Slugworth, but then he gives it back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I don't know why why... Why are they great friends? Because <laughs> that's what's required. You know, they, they formed a crew. They got there. They they feel, put a crew together. All right. And they're loving the D. Okay. <laughs> uh, in, the, in the D is where they get their Centura belts distributed. Um, those are the belts that every model land uh, diva wears. Uh, getting the belts causes the girls to ooh and ah. And I have the, let me read the sentence. The Centuras are very, very special. The more you wear them, the stronger your pow pow powers become. Zhen Zhen accented the pows with a pointed finger like she was suit shooting a pistol. <laughs> Zhen Zhen, if you ever do that again, I will stab you with a needle the size of Tookie's couch from Peppertown. Awful. I swear to God, that is awful. Terrible. And, you know, to, to their credit, though, you, you go on a university tour, you're not going to have, like, a cool guy giving you a speech. It's going to be someone who, you know, wants to spend their free time giving university tours and their, you know, sort of pre-planned banter is probably going to be just as corny. Right. I, I think I may have mentioned it on this podcast if I have. What do I get? I get a penalty, right? Penalty point. Yeah, you get to do an extra fanfic. Um, was that we, Bridget and I, went to a distillery in Cincinnati once oh, and, yes. the, <laughs> and the guy... The guy asked us if we could do the jokes because it was just us and another couple instead of a gr you know, like a, a solid group of people. And it was very slow that day. And so he said, should I do the jokes or not? And Bridget and I immediately went, no. <laughs> and he was very, very hurt. He's like, I, I expected you to all to enthusiastically say yes. And he was very sour towards us the rest of the, the thing. Man, like, don't ask the question. Yeah, I thought it was a legitimate question. Like, won't it be strange when I'm just given like these corny, like, boy, I bet you fall into that vat. You'll never want to get out. Am I right? <laughs> and, like, you know, to four people standing there sort of quietly <clears throat> coughing into their yeah. fists. Like, but no, he wanted to do them. Anyway, two months ago, we went to see a 
thoroughly average stand-up comedian at a, a local brewery in a in a hall that probably would you know they have probably weddings there so it was me lauren and 10 other people <laughs> and it was very mm. uh, having to listen to someone tell jokes in a setting where there is not a a quorum of laughter is is awful because you feel a need to overcompensate um which feels even less natural when it's about something you wouldn't be laughing about in the first place right yes <laughs> Ah, uh, but uh, but here in the uh, are we in the O? Is it all the O? No, we're in the, the D, D. Of is the D a subset of the O? The O is I don't believe so. I think the O. I think they had another thing where it's like, oh, that stands for opera. Like I think they, okay. they someone always announces what they stand like because it wasn't clear enough that during the first read through. <laughs> okay, so now they're they're getting uh, settled in their dorms, and this is where we get. The the uh, girl with the head bangor. Yes. Which is just earbuds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this goes on for a long time, and I found this very tiresome. Yeah. Her name- was there anything about the head bangor that you liked? No. I did. Uh, okay. I just wrote right. down that she's Kamalini and she's, you know, not Indian, I think was my takeaway, just like the other girl was ni- Icelandic. My mother is a Chakra Wood actress and director. Mm so i don't i don't like bollywood right she's supposed to be indian right yes okay (laughs) i mean that's what my that was my takeaway from that like from the the the, i thought the chakra wood was the tap was the tip off yes so she listens to a pair of earbuds which for some reason is causing a lot of discussion (laughs) like you listen to these yes i listen to them all the time they gave them to me, but I'm addicted to the music. And it's because something horrible happened to her? Yeah, I think something involving her father, which puts her in line with the other characters. Right. So anyway, that that but that went on for like paragraph after paragraph. I was like, oh, God. We're, we're talking about someone's earbuds for three pages? <laughs> yeah, right. At least J.K. Rowling had the decency not to introduce us to any specific Hufflepuffs or uh, Ravenclaws. You know, they were always just sort of there. <laughs> you didn't have to learn about whether they were constantly uh, to listening to Bollywood soundtracks. Uh, yeah, so they get the roommates and then um, they they go to bed on their cloud beds. It turns out that, boing, Zarpressa is her roommate. Yes. I'm, and I'm going to say it. I'm going to say Zarpessa every time, people. So back off. I don't care that it's Zarpessa. It's easier to yeah, say Zarpessa and it doesn't matter. So maybe I'll switch yeah. which ones I say. Yeah, Zar- yeah Zarpessa does. Zarpessa causes you to have to sort of pause for a minute. Yeah. So let's just call her Zarpessa. Good. <laughs> and, That's fine. And yeah, so they, they have invisible beds and Zarpessa. Pressa takes Tookie's like good one, so Tookie gets a smaller bed, which is just in the room for some reason. They have inferior beds, um, and Zarpessa don't uh, debuts her nickname for Tookie, which you know, really shows the type of mind we have working here. Uh, she says twenty five hundred thread count. My mother's brother's son's cousin's mentor is the manufacturer of these linens. You all are going to sleep like princesses in these. I've got them at my bed at home. Don't I? Two two. So that's her that insulting has to sting. nickname for yeah. Tuki. Tu- Tutu. I mean, we've already mm-hmm. saw, what, what was the guy's name? Like Daniel, Brian? <laughs> De- Brian. Debuted the Dookie. Uh, so, um, but Tutu is, you know, she, she didn't workshop it enough with Chase, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, when we, uh, when we had children, we had to sort of field test the names with our friends. Mm-hmm. You know, you invite your your college friends over and you go like, all right, here's the names we're thinking of. Uh, what do you got for me? You know, Mm -hmm. my, my son's names are George and, and August like, all right, George, George, I mean, Georgie Porgy, like, yeah, that doesn't really, (laughs) doesn't really sting, you know, Gorge, uh, George, the, yeah, I can't do it. All right. That one passes. Okay. Yeah. And now how about, uh, how about, uh, uh, Tinas is what I'm considering. (laughs) Any, anything that could go wrong with that one. (laughs) <laughs> we uh and then when when our kids went to grade school there were a bunch of teachers that had and i i can't say the names but yeah they were like you know tinas and mr glasscock and stuff and our <laughs> our kids and all the other kids in the classroom had no nicknames didn't meant it was not worth a mention like I, you will not believe this but i have a teacher named you know <laughs> mr pubic like no nothing <laughs> They, we were just like, come on, man, you got to get something going here. Yeah, really. This is, I give you permission here. 
kids sat politely and didn't uh, didn't make any comments uh, no rhymes no drawings of their teachers come on meanwhile mr pubic's in the uh, teacher's lounge in like the third semester being like they haven't said anything i can't keep this up the rest of the year <laughs> i made it's my wife come me. into the room and call me and we're, she's i'm sleeping on the couch because she thinks i'm so weird this was supposed <laughs> to stop in minute two of the school year uh yeah two two yeah, it's great. If your if your friend had been like that, you're like, I'm gonna name my daughter Tookie, and she's like, Well, kids might call her Tutu. You're like, All right, good. That that's the best they can come up with. Sure, I don't see that happening, but okay, I'll I'll deal with that when it comes. Sure. Well, uh, speaking of teachers who who do things that you did not approve of at your kids' schools, uh, they say, Oh, one more thing. Here we tell time by color, not by number. Look for the mm-hmm. clocks around the land. You'll get the hang of them soon. So just absolute needless whimsy it is frustrating as hell yeah that comes up again a little bit later and the payoff is just as bad as the setup seems like it's going to be so it is as disappointing as you think (laughs) it's like uh you know 10 12 15 years ago when a when a restaurant would be like we don't have heinz ketchup we make our own ketchup that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup and you're like oh my god what a hill to die on this is you're just making things worse for your servers every single time they have to explain that to someone. It's like, we tell time by color, not number. You don't need to do that. <laughs> like, everyone comes from a world where you don't do that. Like, oh, yeah. I feel like that that has, uh, you know, for the better, that has turned around, right? I can go to a place that is otherwise, we do all of our own stuff here. Here's some Heinz ketchup. Like, yes, that is exactly what I want. Yeah. Or, I mean, but if they don't, I, I, I don't. Yeah. I, it's not, it's not. Not something they're making a big deal out of if they're doing it, I think. I don't think they're they're yeah. explaining that to you as like before you've even like put in your drink order. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh so they they settle into their dorm and then what's her name? Zarpressa. Mm-hmm. That's right. Sure. Zarpressa uh, who's teamed up with Teopolis. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, they get their Lumiere yes. on them, which is just a light that like does something to their face yeah it sort of bathes them in regenerating light at night sort of like you know a a sort of video game would restore your life or something yeah again who cares yeah right it's like their owl um and uh they i I thought it was funny that zarpressa wakes up in the middle of the night um and sort of in a night terror moment screams hide under the overpass (laughs) (laughs) Her family's just living under a bridge, scrounging through dumpsters, you know, uh, making clothes out of old, uh, old, you know, rail road signs or whatever. They're pretty much hobos. Maybe that was why she was so excited about getting a, a hobo bag. I guess so. I, I was just at a uh, a party where two of the people, one of them was my son, had a uh, described having a roommate for a sh- very short time who had night terrors. Oh God. And so the first night he slept with him, like full top of the throat, screaming as though being, you know, murdered with an axe or something and ran in and like, what, what, what is going on? Oh, hey, man, what's what's happening? <laughs> like, you were just screaming. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Like, you have to know that this wow. is a thing. And another person had the same thing, but the, it was that uh, the person they roomed with said actual words and stuff. So even more disturbing, you know. God. Yeah, but that's Zarpressa. Zarpressa, sorry. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you you'd have to transfer. I mean, that's a good way to you know whip that out first uh, week of school. You might get a room to yourself for the rest of the year. Yeah, I guess fake it would be a good thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, they they uh, in the middle of the night as the uh, Lumieres are bathing the rest of her uh, roommates, Tookie wakes up and just starts walking around, and then uh, is encounters a very disturbing sound which is somebody is whacking in the d <laughs> <I didn't. laughs> there's a i didn't put that together but that is absolutely true a, suddenly a sharp sound made her stop whack whack more whacks came followed by whimpers and the muddy sound of breathy unintelligible words and she she walks over and sees it and is able to find cl in some sort of like cell and she's uh, flagellating herself with a wooden plank and saying, I'm sorry, over and over again. So it's, it's sort of like that, that guy in the Da Vinci Code who's, who's always hitting himself 
Um, and no, yeah. no word on why they put her like in the uh, in the freshman dorms. You think if you were imprisoning someone in secret, you might want to do a, a little less conspicuous place. Hey, some of those rooms get you know rented for other things, and so you know you gotta uh, flagellate, self-flagellate where you can. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Uh, this is a, a again. We're settling our uh, six-year-old down for a for a sleep. Right. It's eight. It's eight thirty. It's uh, you know fall, so the sun has set. Okay, honey, I'll read a little more. A gash in the figure's back opened, and Tookie could see raw flesh. And still, Tookie stood paralyzed at the door. Whack! More flesh broke. What were once pinpricks of red now oozed blood from deeper cuts and gashes. Good night. Here's your bear bear. <laughs> Go back to the hags and the boils on noses. <laughs> I'm still processing all of that. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to be screaming about this when I get my roommate in college. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, she does. So, uh, she does. She does body horror well. That's the that's the one thing I'll give Tyra Banks. I mean, I, I think we had a line in our Gumby riff tracks that was like, I was not expecting, you know, David Cronenberger level of body horror from Gumby the movie, <laughs> nor Model Land. I wasn't thinking it was going right. to pop up that often here either. Ah, uh, but I got you first on a Sonic challenge. Mm. Wow, I thought I was uh, going to get through unscathed. Now here you go. This is. Um, you need me to whack in the D? Is that? I mean, because that's. Nah. You got to give me like <laughs> ten minutes. I'm not going to make that request. Here we go. Uh, this is just a, a little backup, a little character development, and then into the, the phrase. Hands clawed at the photo, and the figure started to beat its forehead against it. Then came a wail so deep, so guttural, so agonizing. Ah, sorry, sorry, so, so, sorry, 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 no punctuation. Oh, man. you got All caps with exclamation points. Uh, so what is it ah uh, no sorry 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 ah uh, sorry sorry so so sorry 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 okay uh deep, deep. so guttural yeah. so agonizing deep like who is the sheriff of 64 squares deep like uh well it does not say unspecified that's your it's your character to build and develop oh no sorry sorry so so sorry sorry All right, I'll play uh, Tookie then, because Tookie gasped. <gasps> so there we go. Wow, you waited till the end of the whole uh, the whole self flagellating thing to gasp. That's impressive. Yeah. So this is uh, Seal sitting in a room, uh, beating herself with a, a a board, a wooden plank, I think. Yeah, a wooden plank. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no whimsical uh, model pun name for it or anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wooden plank, back bruised and bloody. All right. Yeah. Great. Chapter, End of chapter. Chapter nineteen. Kara, <laughs> kara, kara, and the dormitory effect. Uh, so this is the dormitory effect refers to how it starts. They go to the dorm bathroom where every girl is doubled over in pain, gripping their stomach at the same time. And we uh, we touched on this. Mm. Uh, they get the explanation coming, but we touched on it in real or fanfic last time. Um, my early takeaway from this was. Uh, it says that Piper and all people from Sans Color are geniuses, by the way. It sort of drops that in there. I don't know if we were mm-hmm. alluded to that <laughs> earlier, but that's good to know going forward. And then uh, Piper uh, is rooming with Dylan, but also with that strumpet chaste. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I was just very amused by that. That's the that's the takeaway for that character. Uh, the strumpet chaste again, age. Uh, yeah, she was the one who wanted to do everybody on the thing, uh, on all of the, uh, best osterone. So 14, 15. Okay. <laughs> uh, the graffiti on the wall, you, you have it there? Uh, yeah, no, I think I, I, I highlighted it and, and speculated about some other graffiti, but I didn't, I don't think I actually got it down. Lada Defa Cake. Okay. Seven, seven, four, sure. And persecution, spelled all sort of like if Prince had spelled persecution, okay. never forget, never return. Um, that uh, had me scratching my chin. The lot of defa cake is pretty gross. Yeah, seven seven for sure. I don't know what that. I'm sure, but they're all persecuted. So are these like? 
is there is uh, the toilets just filthy? What what's happening in this bathroom? <laughs> yeah. Is what I'm asking. I don't know. Did did Chase sit somewhere broken hearted? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I I was shocked to not see a uh, flush twice. It's a long way to the kitchen. I was disappointed <laughs> that we didn't see that. Nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't uh, know. Maybe Modi Bertels just eat the big white mints was not there. God. Uh, very disappointing. Yeah. But this is, yeah, it would be Moaning Myrtle's time to shine, just hanging out and smoking <laughs> yes. a cig, wake, welcoming everybody to the bathroom. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Moaning. Uh, thankfully, there's no real body horror in the bathroom, I don't think. Uh, no, they don't describe any, you know, specific dumps or anything like that. They just, um, they, they, get, they get out of there and are going to face, face, face class, which is what Kara, Kara, Kara means, Kara, 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 I'm not sure. I don't. Is that Italian? I don't. I know. think so. I guess so. Uh, but we also get this thing. She she goes to brush her teeth, and uh, we get this line. Um, looking at her toothbrush reminds her of her father because he wanted to get her DNA tested from it. She was mm-hmm. allowed to keep only two personal items, but in reality, had come to Model Land with heavy baggage she couldn't get rid of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> barf. Uh, uh, and why doesn't she bring her dop kit to the? Uh... To the bathroom? Because they were all issued one. Did she spend all night watching Seal flay her back open with a plank? Uh, I suppose if she just ran right there. I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> because because she's, you know, supposed to clean up. That's part of the thing. Like, she's going to be in big trouble. There's no real reason given. She just says, oh, I'm fine. I'm not going to shower or anything. I'm going to take a bit of toothpaste on my index finger and rub it on my teeth. All right. Huh. Very good question. Uh, and she says, because she's puzzled by it, Piper, are you ready to wade into this? My back and tummy are killing me, mm-hmm. she whispered. <sighs> Join the club, Tookie. Every new Bella started menstruating at the exact same time this morning. <laughs> so, yeah, you're reading it to the uh, to the bedtime story, and you've, you've made it through the, the um, luxury bags wrapping around your neck warts on noses um all the stuff they flagellating from last time and you know is this when you're going to put down the thing and be like this is not a book i should be reading to you why did i keep it up for this long uh so yeah then it just gets into synchronized um menstruation yes right which you know at Thank the you. beginning of the book if we had put put our put our money on things i think i don't think that if we had drafted things just out of the blue that we thought might happen, I, I, I don't think either one of us would have predicted that. And, and if either one of us did, we probably would have, you know, you know, looked at the other one askance the next time we saw them in person, I'm guessing. Probably would have said, what's the second book in our list of things we're going to read? <laughs> uh, but now that you know that, why don't you once again, I'm sure you all have the tab open of the picture of Michael Solar. So please go over. <laughs> Take a look at that yeah. and come back and uh, we'll pick it up here. Yeah, you know, some things are like, you know, they say like put a put a blank post-it note like on your computer monitor just as a mindfulness exercise. So you look down at it and reminds you to like not get wrapped up into things. We should just keep pictures of Michael Salort uh, handy so we can look up <laughs> every time we read something like this. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> I, bet, uh, I bet Dwight David Thrash could write a, a synchronized menstruation scene like nobody else. I bet if he, uh, yeah. if he put his mind to it. Or the Cozy Sisters. <laughs> right. Uh, so they get all ready and they go to another classroom and we meet a new guru. Mm-hmm. On the way, she gets insulted by some testosterones who sort of like um, just say like, "Who? what is that you're talking to? Um, but I just think that's setting up some sort of maybe future romance. So his name. Uh, we also, uh, yeah, we also get a tossed away. Uh, Webb was his name. Yeah. Uh, out of nowhere from the other side of the wall, there's some sound. And some people say the spirits over there get pissed at us sometimes and want to burn model land down. <laughs> so just that's just in the background of people's faces turning into horrible trolls and, you know, gaseous, mephitic clouds of smoke coming out of people's tortured faces. Also, at any point, the entire model land could be burned to the ground and they all die in a fire. Yeah. So that's just... A light background note. And at this point, if those are just like rumors, you know, like there was always rumored to be like tunnels at UVA that you could go down to, like horrible things have happened with alarming frequency. You've got to assume those are based in reality at this point in time. Those, the, 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 the male models from testosterone are, are building a new 
stadium for them because a fireball burnt down the last one. Oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we, we get a nice, uh, I don't know if you, I only know the cliche. I, I guess you'll just have to trust me on this. I was. I never read Penthouse Forum, but uh, this description reminded me of the cliche of it. Oh, nice. One had pale skin and angular face and piercing hazel eyes. The other was stockier with dark skin and the fullest lips Tookie had ever seen. <laughs> Isn't that the cliche? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they uh, both both hot, but in, in sort of separate ways type of yeah, thing. Yeah, just slightly different. Tookie ways. never thought it could happen to her, but... Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and I also like that it's... Uh, oh, there was a guy named Bravo um, who says... His skin was smooth and richly colored, and his eyebrows looked naturally arched, which is almost as bad as if he'd been a religious waxer. Tookie had never been a fan of the pretty boy arched eyebrow look. Theophilus's unique features were more to her taste. So just insulting a uh, a specific look that no one was thinking about out of the blue. Right. I, I can't picture it. I don't know what it is. Uh, so they go to what they passed on the way in was a a boat, yeah. but it's actually a shark. A ship, yeah, that is designed to... Yeah, I think that... I'm not going to elaborate on that because that's the takeaway. It looks like a boat, but it's actually a sharp shark and it's a classroom. Yes. Inside, it's a shark. Outside, it's a boat. There's a little walkway to it. A bridge made of driftwood led from shore to the vessel's door. So, yes, yeah. it's a boat, but a shark. <laughs> Makes and as then... much sense as us talking about it. If you're not reading along with the book, that's that's what the takeaway is. And then we get the next guru. Yeah, this and is this is the guru. I think it's also Guru Nar Nares, you know, Guru Bib Fortuna, whatever we're doing here. I think it's the same same guy. Wait, what? I think it's Guru Naz. No, because just then a wooden door on the side of the boat snapped open. Inbounded a tall man. Oh, sorry. Wearing an embroidered cape and a red jumpsuit, with a vibrant multicolored serape sash around his waist. Mm-hmm. He had poochy lips. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy. A button nose, bushy eyebrows, twinkly saucer-shaped eyes that immediately generated a smile from Tookie. That does not add up for me. (laughs) And all of the girls in the shark room. It just became a... Yeah, he just started calling (laughs) it a shark room. And then... His features flapped and twisted as if they were made of something much more flexible than flesh and bone. But despite all that, Tookie thought he was quite handsome in his own special way. I mean, you know, game recognized game there. If Tookie has an enormous forehead and, you know, sideshow Bob feet, you know, that he yeah, wouldn't so, take it yeah. as a compliment. But yeah, this is another guy that I've used this to describe things before. But it's like the beginning of Mario 64 when you could just pull his nose and stretch his features like that. Yeah. <laughs> and just... it says, uh, as he's as sort of beckoning them in, it says, the guru's fingers stretched out from his hand, curved around the girls, and flicked on a light at the back of the shark room. So possibly the longest fingers on record yet in the history of the podcast. <laughs> Why is that a thing in all of our books? <laughs> uh, but his lesson, this, this, this man with these long, poochy lips and, and features that spark a smile even though you would flee uh, to another state if you ever saw him walking down your sidewalk um he is there to teach them to uh, suppress their emotions and deliver the opposite performance of whatever they should be thinking about so if they uh i i guess some sort of joke about models looking serious on the runway type of thing but it's like i show you something funny you look serious i show you something serious you would look like you're having the best time of your life i show you something gross uh you you love it um uh, and it's to hopefully keep them from becoming actresses, <laughs> which is you know, rears its head yes. again. Again, a very specific thing that is obviously needling our author, and uh, she's turning it into an entire thing, yes. uh, which doesn't it, it certainly does not ring true with me. Right. We all have had to, uh, you know, put on a happy face at a party or something where you don't feel like it. You have a slight fever or something, so we know what it is, yeah. but. She is very irritated by the fact that when she is asked to model, she is supposed to uh, suppress whatever emotions are at the forefront. Right. Fail, um, so, and you okay. may be relegated to spending your life as, heaven forbid, an actress. The guru said this last word in a low, disgusted whisper. Actresses are incapable of opposite performing. They must think about sad times in their lives to project sadness on the silver screen. Nonsense. Uh, there we go. <laughs> 
Uh, and, and this, the Bellas changed their expressions from happy to sad, confused to angry, sexy to serious with each different challenge. How old are they again? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all, you know, the it's like junior year of high school and down to 13, which is where Miracle was. It was her first year of eligibility. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm just pointing it out. I'm not making any comments. Looks at your printed out picture out. of uh, Michael Salort. Michael Salort. I'm looking at you. And uh, Chase, uh, the Centura, responds to these prompts. He starts showing in these horrible hologram images. And uh, some, of them, some are horrible, some are not. But you're supposed to respond differently. But your Centura is doing things. Chase Centura, which, as, is, as we know, is a yellow belt, shimmers sexily. So this guy is, is horning out on a, a belt. <laughs> that's where we're at now everybody has their thing i guess sure uh so just to re i i just wrote a summation of it you tell me if this is right uh images of a two-headed vulture picking out a child's eyes enters the shark classroom <laughs> run by mr fantastic who speaks a sort of patois of different languages and the vulture transforms into a giant feather that tickles all the girls in the classroom well, Mr. Fantastic yells at them to react opposite of how they feel. Am, is that, am I right about this chapter? Yeah, that's exactly what is happening. Okay. That is <laughs> just want to make sure that I didn't that's... accidentally like take a, you know, a horse tranquilizer in my, <laughs> you know, that a veterinarian left in my closet or something and, and read this book. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, that could be how it was written. If uh, Tyra Banks or Michael Salute were in the habit of eating pills they found in their closet. <laughs> there was other good ones too. Uh, the challenge zipped by more quickly. They had to react to a steaming pile of rotting food under their noses. Uh, so not the food that was in the dumpster that Sarpressa was in earlier. <laughs> Correct. Uh, then a picture of an earless baby rabbit abandoned by its mother. Uh, there was a, uh, oh yeah, there's a girl named Bo who's dead faced. She's just sort of a, a shell of a, of a woman. The only girl he corrected almost as much was as, as Tookie because she's unable to do this. Her centura is not working. It's not helping her. Was dead faced Bo who didn't even freak out over a photo of a dead cat giving birth to an octopus on an abandoned road. So yeah, this is like the uh, one there's those uh, in Yellow Submarine when like the stipple drawings of, you know, Winston Churchill, whatever would be, you know, floating past them in the sky. And then, you know, uh, eyeballs would pop out of it. This is their sort of hallucinogenic scene. Yeah, it's, um, you know, the ring four or right, something. Yeah. Where you... yeah, just maggots emerging out of a, like, uh, of a jar or something, or you, you open your mouth and a moth flies out type of thing. Yeah. And, and one of the things that's supposed to startle her is the, uh, is a, uh, high, a tightrope act. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Tookie's face froze in the worst possible way. The performer reminded he, her of, Chris Kremcrobat. I had forgotten that his name was Chris Kremcrobat when he was doing his uh, his act. Yeah. Wow. But she gets to the point where she can't take it anymore. She twisted to the right, leaned over, and threw up. Some of it landed in Bo's hair. But to her relief, Bo threw up too. Impassively, of course. What girl wouldn't want to go to model land? <laughs> This is, I mean, again, how are we ever, after this one especially, how are we ever going to do real or fanfic again? Sure, yeah, you're barfing on people who then barf impassively. There's there's nothing we can do. Uh, but we do get a nice moon people reference. Oh. Because ev in the classroom, everyone froze <laughs> waiting. So <laughs> they're all synced up. Very nice. well, they're all synced up in more ways than one. Cause that's what, uh, yes, indeed. That, uh, yeah, that's the ultimate. That's Dale and Courtney's ultimate uh, goal. I'd say. Um, but she says the Belladonna reveals that they're, you know, eliminating their periods forever, though. They're quick to point out. They're still able to have children, but it's just, uh, you know, unwilling biological experiments on children. Model land. <laughs> You know, I mean, I guess kids died at Hogwarts all the time, but it was always sort of caged in whimsy. This, uh, this, you know, it, 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 it goes down. It's a bit of a harder pill to swallow once you're, uh, once, when you're still brushing the, another student's barf out of your hair when you're getting right. told that your, uh, your, your biology has been irreparably altered. And re remember in the background, the school could be burned to the ground at any time. Mm -hmm. 
And also in the background, which was sort of, uh, uh, she teased at it in one of the previous chapters, is that she still thinks they could be sacrifices. Oh, true. Yes. Yep. And she says uh, this way, which I did not remember this feature of it. You know, those rumors about scouts chasing civilian girls to come to model and to be used as sacrifices, experiments, and food. <laughs> I looked back. I did not find that part of the thing that they were scaring them with was that the other people would eat their flesh. Yeah, I thought it was just drinking their blood. Well, I thought it was they, they used the blood for a sacrifice, okay. but I didn't know like actual, you know, uh, you know, Soylent Green stuff, like making hamburgers out of the girls. Yeah, just early on it says that their uh, disposable girls are brought to be tortured, then killed, used as human sacrifices for ungodly experiments and animalistic rituals. Ungodly experiments, they've just negated a, a basic biological function of 50 different uh, miners. This, this is the uh, ungodly experiment. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure this violates a lot of... <laughs> yeah, every ethical a thing A lot of ethical there. codes. Yeah. Yes. Ah, uh, well, we we have reached our last chapter of this session. It is called Run and Gun. Um, what 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 happens in this one? Uh, let oh, let me see. This here. is the uh, yeah. This is the the runway. This is where they they finally learn how to do a a runway walk. Um, I've only got a few notes for this one. Yeah, I don't have much. I do. Um, I did notice that snort laughing is kind of big in the. 372 world. Zarpressa wrinkled her nose at Tookie like she smelled raw sewage. I see they haven't turned you into 2 2 barbecue yet. Chase laughed so hard she snorted. <laughs> yeah. I didn't feel that was worth a snort laugh, but you know, I'm, I'm not at the, uh, I'm not in the D or the O or any of those other things. It's hard to blame Zarpressa for that because, you know, she's got this terrible material, but her audience eats it up. So, you know, it's hard to grow as an artist when you're sort of, you know, you're not really being challenged by your audience. I, I guess so, yeah. You have the your toadies around yeah. and whatever you... So that's not a good place to be, no. right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is all just about them doing their walk in front of... Uh, which which one of the uh, gurus do we have here? I believe this is Guru Ganaru Naz. Yes. This is Ganaru. He's yeah, back. He, yeah. he comes back. For whatever reason, they didn't have a... You know, Harry Potter had a different teacher for every class, but um, this is just... They, they, they got lazy, I suppose. Um, but but against his will, against Ganaru's will, Seal comes in as a uh, a model for it, like to show them how to do it. Yep. Though he does not want her to, mm -hmm. he he finds her disgusting, I guess. But then she starts doing uh, her spoken word poetry, yes. which I don't think she's supposed to do. And uh, I'll just read a sample of it and see if you can make heads or tails. Can I can I can I interject before you do that? Keep in mind, please do. CL's spoken word poems were famous, recited by girls all over the world. Yes. Uh, so she does it. She starts with a colorless girl in a colorless world, now stained crimson because of her quest. I'm stained crimson, Piper whispered. Is she talking about my Aunt Dottie? And we go back to Seal. A microscopic lass below the criterion, Seal went on. Journey aborted, but soul cannot rest. She mean me? <laughs> Shiraz squeaked. What she mean about my soul? I not dead. Seal continued, now overwrought with emotion. A Rubenesque damsel surrounded by twigs, her lush carcass devoured, insects infest. Dylan says, There better not be no bugs infesting me, she sputtered. What the hell is going on? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. Um, I don't know, but Rubens in exists in this world. Um, uh, yes, the, the painter, the painter who, uh, um, yes. But, so yeah, they uh, is Seal sort of like staring daggers at them with every quip, uh, every couplet she reads to them because that's like you know you wouldn't go to a uh, you know inauguration and, and Maya Angelou is is reading her poetry and you're being like you're sitting there being like, am I the caged bird here? Am I? Yeah. You have to be remarkably self centered to think that any of this crap would be about you. Is this supposed to be the like the uh, the mirror in Elfland? You know, like you shall see many things, Frodo, <laughs> things which are yet to be, or may, you know, like she's just is she going into a trance and doing this, huh. uh, or is she reading like you know? I'm sure you've been dragged to a uh, one man or one woman show where you just want to hang yourself, mm -hmm. but you have to sit there. And 
Yeah, I think the she's one. she's sort of just using this as an open mic. She's got her, you know, she's doing the what else have I got here? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. the, the Ruben S damsel with bugs in her spine. How about this one? And that yeah. she's no actually snaps. pulling out her her yellow notepad. Like I uh, wrote a few things down. This isn't fully developed yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tom Cruise is in the news again. What's he up to? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so those are the world famous poems. Um, I mean, think about how many famous poets, poets there are. We usually, you know, there's probably one. There's always one. You, you know, you someone's got to got to pass away or retire to to allow a new one. But this is this society has has chosen that these are the ones that girls are going to memorize and do at talent shows all over the world. Yeah. So, but instead of saying like this must this is her newer stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess because right. otherwise they would have recognized it. It would have been like, True. yeah, yeah, they're do it's uh, Oasis. They're doing Wonderwall. <laughs> you know, Oasis doesn't come in and then just like not play Wonderwall. Right? Yeah. I mean, I guess she's always working. Um, she's probably got a lot of time to compose during those uh, late night sessions of Whacking in the D. <laughs> <laughs> but then you you love that. I well, love it was that. just a gift. You know, you, you get the D and then you get whacking. It's just you know you can't uh, you can't make that up. Uh, but so in the Belladonna uh, statue uh, interjects and starts, as you would to shut up any given uh, slam poet, uh, makes a bunch of bouquets of flowers and rose bushes and bonsai trees and, you know, wormwood pop out of her mouth, uh, which prompts an amazing reaction here. Uh, it's even described as because I was like, this sounds like one of those magician scarves. And then they made that that same reference themselves, which made me chagrined. But mm-hmm. then CL says... All right, all right, CL yelled toward the window at the Belladonna statue. I'll stop reciting poems. It's like, all right, that's that's the reaction that all of us want from any given poet who is reciting poems. You want them to, yeah, to say mean, those exact words. Unwanted poems. Uh, if someone said, uh, you have a choice, A or B, I'm going to tell you the dream I just had or I'm going to read from my poetry book. Yeah, right. Boy, that's that's the sill in Charybdis. There, there's no uh, there's no way out. The what now? The what? The what? The sill in Charybdis? Yeah, I don't know that. Is oh, that, come on! Did they sing in the year twenty five twenty five? Sill in Charybdis. Sill <laughs> in Charybdis. They they wrote songs for Squeeze. <laughs> oh no, that was Difford and Tilbrook. Uh, no, that's the either the uh, it's you know in the in mythology. Mm-hmm. either the whirlpool or the monster that eats you, uh, you got no it got it okay yeah, yeah nice yeah i i know that now i can picture the exact picture from the mythology book i grew up reading of that of that moment okay but i hope i'm pronouncing it right good lord i just laid myself out there i said <laughs> Scylla and charybdis look, there let it stand look we get enough emails about pronunciation like i'm not unless they're wildly impressive i'm not going to read any more of them so okay. look sometimes you read something and pronounce it incorrectly like <laughs> that's the way the world works um but i i do think that the uh that cl is giving um the vogons of hitchhiker's guide uh, the, the run for the worst poetry in the universe i do think that it's that could, if those two universes ever collide that would be a fun team up <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't know them i'll take your word yeah um but yeah, I'll sum up this scene like you did the last one with Mr. Fantastic. Uh, it turns out that whenever a model is doing a, a runway walk at a fashion show, their centura belt, which is yellow, is hypnotizing the audience so that the audience doesn't notice that the model is actually sprinting up and down the runway and that when they go behind the scenes to change, they are attended to by a Indy 500 type crew of hundreds of hands that changes the thing and redoes their makeup for them uh, in order to make it seem like they're just doing a quick costume change. That is correct. Okay. That correctly sums it up. And in this case, Zarpessa, Zarpressa, yep. uh, that is Theophilus's boyfriend sure. or girlfriend, <laughs> uh, Zarpressa has stolen her tookie, our hero, yes. Tutu, uh, stolen <laughs> her her, <laughs> her centura and replaced it with a strip of yellow cloth of some sort from her old dress or something like that. And so she, when she goes up to sprint up and down the thing and get uh, serviced by the pit crew to get change, it just appears in real time. She looks like garbage. She looks like the vomit she vomited in Shark Room. It's just like she's the worst. Yes. And so it gets this reaction 
and this is my last uh, quote of the book, uh, Gennaro says to her, girl, you belong in model bland, Gennaro joked. A heavy, heavy scare quotes around joked. The word joke was then taken outside and shot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow! Yeah, uh, my only my only other takeaway from this was uh, Chaste goes next. Chaste is, I, I you see, if I had to pick a favorite character, at least Chaste, you know, she she gives you what she wants. She's living life the way she wants to, <laughs> laughing at terrible uh, terrible jokes and just sort of being like the the horny teen in this uh, academy. Chaste went next in the mirrors. She somehow made running look almost pornographic, shaking yeah. shaking everything she shouldn't. Um, wow. so like shaking her, like her, her elbow and like the, the hanging down thing at the back of her throat <laughs> on the runway, she rubbed her body all over gyrating to the beat, like a dancer in an exotic nightclub. I not old enough to look Shiraz yelped, cho- closing her eyes. Ganero groaned. This is model land, not strip town. So that's when just that's when I noted that she has become my favorite character. Wow, what what did they call her earlier? Uh, a, a, a strumpet, <laughs> strumpet. I was trying to think like slattern, uh, yes. harlot. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, it ends with CL is glaring at all four girls whenever they go on the runway. Uh, we have no idea why or what the hell is going on, but uh, that's just Model Land, baby. That's uh, that's what you expect from this book at this point in time. And she, uh, it is revealed that uh, the midnight uh, viewing of her hitting herself with a board is real. Her back is flayed open and bleeding. <laughs> Good night, then. Good night, everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, you can't say that nothing happened. Um, where it's leading to, I, I'm, I'm more skeptical of. But uh, in the meantime, let's do some dumb sentences. A sentence begins with a capital letter. A capital letter is a letter that's big. A capital letter is not a small letter. A capital letter is big, big, big. All right, bring us some dumb me. sentences of the week, if you would, please. Here we go. This one is from Steve. Clutching her head bangor, Kamalini scuttled ahead to join her group, climbed through a zip-zap and disappearing down the hole. <laughs> it's just uh yeah words that don't make much sense put together into a sentence that makes less sense uh this is from josh my mother's brother's son's cousin mentor is the manufacturer of these linens and josh broke this down a mother's brother's son is a cousin so just say that but then if it's her cousin's cousin that's herself or a shared family i can't understand what's going on <laughs> uh this one is from mike screech the buzzer wailed and he said, screeches, buzzes, and wails sound nothing alike. In a Venn diagram of sounds, those are the three circles that don't intersect. <laughs> Andy submitted blood-curdling seconds past. And they just wondered... Oh, I did note that as well. <laughs> that burned one of mine. <laughs> they just wondered, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> uh, Taylor submitted, he had poochy lips, a button nose, bushy eyebrows, and twinkly saucer-shaped eyes that immediately generated a smile from Tookie and all of the girls in the shark room. It's just uh, another collection of, of things that would not have made sense to me before I read the book. Still don't make too much after that. <laughs> Tookie felt another cramp in her stomach. One of loss and regret. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's from Jay. Hayden submitted, uh, oh, well, the staccato dance. Uh, Andrew submitted, fake it till you make it which is something that Tyra says this a lot about confidence and sexiness in America's top next model. It makes sense for that. It does not make sense for mountain climbing. (laughs) Uh, Jacob submitted all the zippers coughed up their cargo in reverse order of the girls entrances at the O. And he said, why reverse order? Is there a reason? Will we get an explanation as to how? No, we will not. (laughs) Mm -mm. Uh, John submitted, this is something where they all had to like yell at someone during the assembly. He submitted the sentence, shut your hole, I guess. He said, he said, it's, <laughs> that was what Tookie like reluctantly chimed in with. He said, it's dumb, but possibly also one of my favorite sentences. That is good. Um, Janelle submitted admiring the D-R-U and she added, said the robot pimp disdainfully. <laughs> uh, Craig said, oh, wait, that was Janelle's, Janelle's amazing sentence. Um, Janelle submitted, finally, Tookie found the Kara 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 building. It was the massive boat she'd seen during orientation. She said, so it wasn't a building at all then. It was a boat. 
<laughs> uh, wow. Craig submitted, she thought the name was especially fitting because she felt like she was flying on a natural thigh high. We covered that one. Scott, uh, uh, the, <laughs> oh yeah, I, he had a good comment for this. Uh, the only girl he corrected almost as much was dead-faced Bo, who didn't even freak out over a photo of a dead cat giving birth to an octopus on an abandoned road. And Scott said, clearly the road status is what should have pushed it over. <laughs> and then Aster submitted, Shiraz and Piper barreled towards her too, and the girls crashed together in a sloppy, love-filled reunion hug. And they said, how the hell can a hug be sloppy? <laughs> I don't want to I, think I, about I, it. Yeah, I don't ever want one of those either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, after you eat your sloppy steaks, you get a uh, sloppy hug. <laughs> um, here we have, uh, did you have any that were not covered? I do. Again, no, the good ones are taken, but this one did stick out to me. Uh, the comb snagged and then broke into two pieces, just like it always did. So, if I'm taking this at face value, the comb, there's only one comb. <laughs> it, it depends on how many times it's happened, but it must be just like three times at this point. Uh, right. That, or that she's trying to comb. Is she, is she using the, which shard of the comb is she using as she continues? And then it breaks again into two pieces. Yes, exactly. It, so depending upon where she is in the use of this comb, it could be in many hundreds of pieces. Yeah. All you can read on the, uh, it's one of those ones from a gas station that says unbreakable. But now all you can read is the U on Unbreakable. It's just flagrantly <laughs> yes. false advertising. <laughs> uh, mine was, uh, I have two. The Thorny Passageway closed with a thwack. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, so there's, I don't know if that was in the D. So there's thwack, there's whacking in the D, thwacking in the O. And then we have, uh, oh yeah. So this is, it, it needs some setups here, but it's Piper. Hello, Piper yelled. Hello, hello, hello. She crossed her arms and squinted. Hmm. From the resonance of the sound, I presume we're in a fairly large space. So that is our that is our genius from <laughs> Sans Color, who is a that's I guess that's how she talked. I should have known she was a genius based on the scientificness of that uh, that sentence. Yes, she's uh, she's the computer hacker who's in <laughs> at this point. <laughs> All right. Well, I feel like we've gone long. Let's do some. Uh, we'll do some emails as a as a separate thing, maybe. Yeah, that sounds good. Good. Well, I think for uh, next time, we're going to read through chapter 25. That should be nice and easy. Who knows what biological functions will be uh, unwillingly cut off in our in our heroines? Um, who, what what was the, uh, the what was the creature that was described in the upcoming? Uh, oh, yeah. In the fanfic? The hunchback? Hair? No, it was like a, a, oh, yeah. a some sort of worm or well, there was a hunchback a named Hunchy. And there, okay. there was also a leg leech who had been eating Har leg leech. Harriet's yeah. hair. So um, these all seem to be maybe later because we get the, uh, the the family back into it. And it's, right now it's very hard to imagine how they're going to be worked back into the story. But I suppose they're probably marching up the mountain right now. They're uh, they're the pilgrims who are who are trying to climb up because they feel slighted. Do you think a touching reunion? What's what's going to happen? Yeah, I think that 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 Kremi will stroke Tookie's enormous forehead and her hand will travel you know miles and miles and then she'll stroke it one more time and after those two days have passed she'll say i'm so glad i reunited with you my daughter <laughs> i hope there's some sort of magic that turns her into a doll with an enormous forehead that sits and stares at her from her mirror every day <laughs> and then her soul is trapped in that doll and oh wow the mom's soul eternity. gets trapped inside the doll no oh, the tookie. Tookie okay does. okay yeah, and then when you pull the string in the back she says toot toot Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone. Thank you for, so much uh, going on this incredible journey with us. Uh, we'll uh, we'll pick it up and uh, get back into this strange world of the O and the D uh, next time on 372 pages. We'll never get back. Bye.